Oh, we all twisted up a little bit. Cheers. Well, What's going on, oh, fellas? How y'all doing? Hey, now. Glover. It's Glover, man. You, man. I, you know, it's really hard to come across people that are so easy to talk to. Yes. You know, we were talking about it before we got on the podcast. And, you know, when you have, you and I, we don't always agree on everything. Yeah. But we are able to have casual conversations that are never, you know, neither of us get defensive. And I kind of wish I had more of that with. A lot of like with daily, like just going in and just talking with normal people because right. people tend to get so defensive and so opinionated. And with the internet, it seems like everyone's an expert these days. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard. And 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 like, um, it's you know, like like I was saying earlier. You know, there's there's really no right or wrong. Answer. Right. I mean, it's yeah. just. I mean, I mean, everybody have their own own opinions. Right. Right. And and if if we can just learn to listen to each other, and just you know try to understand somebody somebody else's perspective. Right, try to fit in their shoes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I think it'll make it – I mean, I think even if we go away not agreeing, we can still have some type of understanding with each other and have, and have you know, go away with a little bit more respect. Right, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah I, wish you, sure. I wish we'd seen that a little bit more. Because you kind of – sometimes you tiptoe around people just because you don't want to – you know you're not going to get offended mm-hmm. or be defensive, but you don't – you really don't want to – Offend them because you know people tend to be a little defensive when yeah, you for sure. give them a little bit of pushback on some things. And I think that mentality of like there's no right or wrong is the best way to improve yourself and like learn more about just yourself in general. Yeah. Like, because I'm not, I know I'm not always right. Right. I love it. No, it's yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to like, yeah, when you it's kind of hard to get there when you think you're like, how like it's kind of hard to accept when you're wrong. Like, keep an yes. open mind to yeah. when you have like that mentality of, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm right on this one. You know, and and for me, I I think I have a strange. Uh, for me, I, I've always had a desire to always, um, be the devil's advocate. Also, me you know, yes, just, I yes. mean, you know, I have my perspective, but sometimes, sometimes I like even arguing a point that I don't even necessarily agree with. Agree with right. oh, just yeah, being able sure. to get into the, you know, get get into the the mindset, mindset. and just have um. Uh, have empathy right. for the other person. Right. And I think that's why we've always gotten along so well. You know, <laughs> I didn't realize how annoying that personality trait can be sometimes because Heather, <laughs> I'm always like that with Heather. I'm like, oh, what about this and this and this? I don't even believe it. I'm just making an argument for yeah. it. And then I started notice, noticing her doing it back to me. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, just like believe me for once, you <laughs> know? so bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you're just doing it right back to me, you know? <laughs> and then we uh, – I remember one time, I think it was uh, – it was Glover Deshera and Hiri Prohaska after their fight. Yeah. And me and him sat down there arguing for like 40 minutes, like yelling at each other. Yeah. And we didn't even believe. Not really. Both sides. It was like playing. It was like, yeah, it was like a loud debate. Like we weren't mad at all, but we're just like, a lot of energy, 40 minutes of us arguing two points. We didn't, neither of us believed it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It gets to the point where we're like, what are we arguing about? And Heather was like, y'all are getting ridiculous. Yeah. You need to stop. (laughs) You was telling me about your views on Django. The movie by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. So uh, let us know how you feel about that. Uh, you know, um, the the, uh, the the first thing I want to say, I am a big fan of Quentin Tarantino. Right. You know, and um, and 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 I really enjoy the movie, but for me personally, um, I, I I find the movie is writ- is really written from more of Schultz's perspective than Django's perspective. Right. You know, and and. And so for me, I, um, uh, I think I have one big issue, and um, me and um, Newsom has talked about this before, is just the, 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 the fact that at the very end of the movie, when um, Schultz has a choice to make, you know, right. uh, he can either shake Candy's hand and they can all get out of there you right. know uh which seems like the most logical, logical way yeah, from a sure. logical Go, guy yeah a logical guy i mean uh the way that quentin tarantino crafted the character you would seem it would seem like okay the whole purpose of 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 their little adventure at the end was to free broom broom him yeah right and so at that point at that point and at that point, when when Schultz refuses to shake his hand and actually, you know, actually shoots, you if know, you, if you insist, yeah, you yeah. really want me to shake your yeah. hand, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so at uh. that point, that sort of breaks the movie for me. 
Yeah. That's an interesting take. I get it because Schultz's character isn't a prideful guy. Like, he's not he's not the guy that, like, you know what, I'm tired of this dude. Like, he would never – I agree with you yeah, that he would never do that. Yeah, I think you're on to something there. You know, and, and like, um, I think that Quentin did a good job um, – ex- um, having us understand why he would not want to shake his hand. Okay, I yeah, mean, you know, yeah. I mean, so we, we, I mean, so, so, so we, I mean, so I, I understand that from his perspective, he's saying, I cannot live with myself. I, you know, I cannot, you know, demean myself to a level of shaking this right, man's hand. Right. My only problem is that you, we've, we've, we've seen, you know, well, you know, um, hours earlier in the film, we've seen the degradation that you know Django and especially Broomhilda yeah. had suffered. Right. And for me, at that point, you know, it breaks the character because is your pride more important than their lives? You know, because that's the that's a big decision that you're making, and, and you know, and so for me, that that point right there makes me say, well. I, I don't, you know, it, it, it loses me, you know. And everything that. leading up to that point makes you think that he's he would never do that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And he's a guy who who doesn't get by on aggression and like brute strength. He's a guy who gets by on like more mental, psychological, like wittiness, you know, charisma. And to see him, you would think that okay, if he gets out of that situation, which was a very high tense situation, right. that he kind of pulled it off yes with his witty with his and witty that's and, and that's where he gets his, his pride knowledge. that's where his pride gets yes. off. yes so you think that like, if he would have just shook his hand and got out that he would consider that a win and, and 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 like the point that i made you i mean just my point is the best point would have been you know he's thinking okay i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna shake this guy's hand but i'm coming back you know I yeah mean, right but he, he he goes to shake candy's hand and candy still kills him at that point, ah. at that point, you know, you're like, okay. you know, you're like, what? You know, you're like, ah. you know, it's, it would break your heart. Have you ever seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's so I'm, I haven't, I watched the first two seasons, but that's the way it made me feel uh, in the first season when, um, I forget the, the character's name, uh, he really like, really swallows his pride. And the, but the difference is he's like a super prideful man, but he's oh, like, but you know what? I'm trying to preserve my family, and he's like, I'm gonna you know go out in front of. He's like, had to ap- apologize to the king in front of everyone or whatever, and they hang him anyway. anyway yes. Oh man, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, this show. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that show was so brutal. Man. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, yeah. I never finished. It. I got three seasons in, but I kind of got into it late, and I feel like I, I already, already knew I already lived and died. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's still worth a watch. Yeah, but. I just need to go back and watch it. That was the same with me with uh, Sons of Anarchy. I knew like it was based off of Hamlet, and I had already I seen the ending on accident whenever mom and dad were watching it, mm-hmm. and I just ended. I was like, man, it sucks knowing how this ends. It just it ruins it. Going back to uh, Django, though, I think that you might be right of that's how it should end because uh, Candy had already been they'd already tried to get over on him, yes. so he had he was already pissed off. He's already kind of a Crazy to look like crazy psycho but already, he's, but he's smart though. He's smart. He's yeah. a very intelligent man. He's, yeah. he's intelligent, so but he would be the one to kind of get a little wild in that situation versus right. especially in his own mansion. Like, yeah, he was his plantation home. He has a lot of power there. If he's to kill can or to kill Schultz, there nobody would probably know. He doesn't really lose anything. Yeah, and and you would and it would um and it really wouldn't change. I mean, you could still have the same setup. I mean, where Django it, kills everyone. Yeah, where Django yeah. kills her. I mean, because it was oh, it, such a bad scene. Yeah, I mean, so it would be it would so it would be just still set up, and you would you would um uh, still be able to uh, for me save the Schultz character because it just I to, like that you know. Now I'll tell you why I like it. Uh, we're in it like today's time. We have all these movies. I know you're a big Marvel guy. I'm not personally. I think that uh, Marvel movies are you, it's very transparent. You can see where they're going. Bad guy comes in. There's 45 minutes left. Tears the town down. You know, there's trouble in the town. 45 minutes left. You know, it's not gonna end like this. Good guys rally. Come back. Win the fight. Uh, I think the beauty of Quentin Tarantino films is that you really don't know where he's going to go, and maybe his intentions were to try to get people's mind into like, okay, maybe uh, Candy's going to kill Schultz it's here. It's like Shyamalan shit. And he kind yeah, of yeah. kind of reverses it to give you that shock factor. Yeah. And not only that, I think that uh, 
just the acting in that film is oh, yeah, phenomenal. Like, just yeah. You know, yeah. Leonardo and uh, Jamie Foxx and Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. Yeah. I mean, uh, Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Oh, yeah, His character in that uh, film. Yeah. Oh my uh, god! Isn't, uh, isn't Walton Goggins? In there, yeah, yes. he's the guy that's uh, he's about to snip him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, that is such a brutal scene yeah. too. I love where it. Jamie Foxx is hanging upside down. Oh, he's about no. to go in there. And oh, about you feel you're like, up. oh no, uh, you yeah. like, like there's like, there's no way he gets out of this. Like, he's really gonna make this a brutal ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> and I love how Quentin always is like, he always gets killed in most, in like some of his. Movies. I don't know if he's in all of his movies, but remember he's at the end and they he gets blown up. Uh, yeah. And oh he, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, also in what Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, he's in Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards. He was a dead body. In was Bastards. he really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. remember he was, that. he was a dead Nazi in Inglorious Bastards. He was just laying there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Now, I'll tell you, my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie is Reservoir Dogs. Really? Yeah. I, I feel like last time we talked, it was Jackie Brown. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're close. Okay. They're, they're close. Because um, uh, Jackie Brown is so different than, you know. It is. It really you know, is. You know, I mean, so I, I mean, I, of course, it's a Quentin Tarantino movie, but, it, you know, it's, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I think what, what was it? Elmo Leonard, uh, it was based on, on a novel off of, of, of. Yeah, I think so. I'm not really. I think you're right sure. on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, when I first saw, uh, Reservoir Dogs, he just blew me away. With such a low budget, too. Yeah. Right. You have what? The diner scene, the car, and the warehouse. Yeah. It's like yeah. three yeah, that's settings. It. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I think you have. Um, There's like a house. Uh, right? In Dude's apartment. Um, I can't think of the character's name. Um, fucking uh, Roth. I know. I, I think I remember. I Where they're in his apartment, and he's t- like going over everything with himself. The lines. Oh, yeah. yes. He's yes. going the lines, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, I mean, and that, just that. Um, just that monologue, you know, yeah. having to, you know, memorize it and having to, you know, having to own it, you know, it's just, it was just so, you know, it was such a, you know, th- that that was really the power. Tim, Tim Roth, That's a, yeah, Tim I Roth. I can't yeah. think, of, I think of Tim. Such a good actor too. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like Quentin got the like pulled the best out of Tim yeah. Roth. I like to see those directors with those uh. Like their guys, you know. Yeah, like I'll tell you who he pulled the best out of was Michael. Michael Madsen, Madsen. Oh, John yeah, Travolta yes. too. Yeah, John yes. Travolta too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yes. Yes. Like you watch some of John Travolta's, some of his other stuff's a little on the uh, side, but you he know? still had like good movies. As far as like, he had very iconic films like yeah. Grease and. Um, yeah, I mean, for him, I think it's the material. If, yeah. if he has good material, he's good. he's good. And yeah. sometimes he he and then he's he face off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> face off. Man. What do you think about face off? Uh it was you know I mean it was it was. I mean, I like it. I mean, but yeah. it, was, it was a movie of the, you know, the time. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick Cage and John Travolta. Yeah. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love Nick Cage. I love John Travolta, too, just because of Pulp Fiction, really. But, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so funny seeing those two guys together. It's <laughs> oh, such, no. such a funny. We were, um, we, we were kind of, him and I were going back and forth on who the greatest action star was a couple episodes ago. And he was leaning Tom Cruise. I was leaning Harrison Ford. And I think, you know, that some of those other guys, you would think like Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, help us out here. What you think? Jackie Chan. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love some Jackie um, Chan. <laughs> yeah, I love Jackie Chan, too. Um, for me, um, it's really weird because, you know, back like back in the 80s, you would have like these steroid you know, mm-hmm. yeah, guys right. like Arnold Jack dudes, and the Celeste, salon, yeah. you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I'm more, you know, I, I sort of prefer now, you know, I, I prefer, prefer Harrison Ford's, um, the, uh, Keanu Reeves. I think he's, oh, yeah, oh, John yeah, yeah I think true. he's, I'll, I mean, I think he's just, for me, um, if you take the John Wick, you take the matrices, right. you know, I, I think that, you know, he's just, um, just an awesome, you know, just an awesome action guy, and he does an excellent job with his stunts, you know. So, I, you know, and he's and he's a good actor, right? You know, um, um, so he's come a long way with his acting too. Because if you go back and watch like Speed, Bill and Ted, Speed's yeah. a, like you remember Speed is like a cult classic film. Yeah. You really love it. Sandra Bullock is beautiful in the film. Yeah, she's yeah. young. And she's and, beautiful in any film. Yeah, yeah she really is. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, you remember just I remember going back and watching it. We watched it a couple months ago, and I was like, "Oh my god, this acting is so bad." What about? But you just uh, love it because it's just kind of it just hits you, you know. River's Edge. I, I remember watching is, River's Edge, so, but I'm so it, bad. Is he bad? It's so bad. Really? It's him and uh, what's that guy that um, in Hot Tub Time Machine? The guy that was missing the arm. 
He's also in. I know my friend. Have you man. watched the uh, Cabinet of Curiosity on Netflix, Guillermo? Uh, I've only watched one episode. Of He's it. also in there. It gets better. No, okay. the first episode with uh, Leslie. Uh, what's his name? Oh, oh brother, where art thou? Yes. Ba- Battle to Buster oh, Scruggs. Yeah. Yes. Um, it is Leslie something. Something Leslie. Tim Blake Nelson. Yeah, yeah. Leslie Blake Nelson. Something like that. That one was like I was excited when I saw him in there, and I was like. It just didn't hit for me. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It, but it does get better. It does get better. Because yeah. after that, I was like, you know, sort of like. Me uh, too. Tim Blake Nelson. Who's Leslie? What are we thinking of Leslie? I don't know. I always want to call him Leslie, though. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it does get better. There's he's But the guy, you're, the actor you're talking about is in there. He also played Willard. I don't know if you remember yeah. Willard. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, yeah. Going back to Quentin, we, it's hard for me to say who my favorite director is because it depended on who I'm watching. It's either Scorsese or, or – or Quentin, and I love the Cohen brothers too. Yeah, but uh, oh, Chris, Crispin Glover, that's the guy with the and Willard and Rivers oh, okay. Edge. And, yeah, that's yeah. Apparently, he's pretty hard to work with. Like, kind of out of his mind, hard to work yeah, with. I can see that. But that's why I heard. I don't know. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Uh, but who are some of your favorite directors? I know you kind of like a lot of classic films. Uh, you know, um, of course, um, You know, I, I'm I'm a big Spike Lee guy. I don't know how okay. much. I don't know. Okay. How much. I don't really know a lot of Spike Lee. You know, he's he's he hasn't been as active. You know, in the last few years. Uh, you know, it was you know you know um he, he has the, the iconic uh, do the right thing. Yeah, that's a great film. And if okay. if, if you guys get that. a chance, it, it's a it's, Netflix, right? It, it, um, I'm not sure. Maybe not. It, it it could be, but it you know it, it's an excellent film. I think that you guys really really enjoy do the right it. thing. Yeah, and it makes okay. you think. You know, yeah. I mean, the question is, did, did Pookie do the right thing? Or yeah. <laughs> right. I, can't, I can't remember his name, the the character in it. But it's is an excellent film. Um, uh, uh, who else do I like? Um, uh, uh, Martin Scorsese. Yeah. You know, um, of course. Uh, uh, what's the film with Ray Liotta? Liotta um, that one right there. Good yeah, fellas. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's the one right there. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. He so good. He's pretty. He's, he gives pushback on a uh, casino. How do you feel about Casino? Um, it was okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, loved it, it, it. But it, I'm a mobster it, guy. Though. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. I yeah. mean, I, I I didn't think. I mean, now how about you? Did, were you? Uh, not a big fan. Uh, of- I lean pretty much the way you lean. I think it would be a good standalone film, but with, I feel like it's just like the exact same track that Goodfellas kind of followed. It's, Go ahead. Where it's some, like three of the same actors. It's kind of the same plot where it's, uh, you know, it's got that uh, small short story with the man battling with his woman that's like kind of going off the deep end because of the money. But man, it was very well written. With it's, Ginger it's when she's narrated. Like losing her mind, yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying it's not. I yeah. just yeah. think that like with if Goodfellas doesn't exist, Casino is a fantastic movie. Yeah. Okay. But at least it's written by the same director. I think. Sure. Some yeah, that's there. fair. If, if it was like, I mean, he can't rip himself off, you know. Yeah. So it's like, if it was written by a different director, I would agree with that. But with since it's written by the same director, I think he can get away with. See, that. I feel like he's like just chasing that dragon of how good Goodfellas was. Yeah. Yeah. And he's trying to reproduce. It feels like he almost reproduced the same movie. Yeah. Now you said you're in a uh, movie club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me what's that, what that's like. Uh, well, you know, um, uh, it's actually uh, uh, my sister and a, a, a friend of mine. You know, Mike Hunt. You know, driver. At yeah. UPS. And uh, we, you know, we we basically uh, we we just uh, we're actually um, just got through where where we actually were supposed to do it yesterday, but my sister got sick. But we uh, we um, read the novel Cool Hand Luke and watched the movie. I still need to watch that. You've oh, recommended yeah. that. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such an awesome movie. Now, who's the lead in that? I know uh, the lead. Uh, Paul Newman. Paul Newman. That's right. Now, now, do you know Paul Newman? Do you know his work? Or, or... I know a very very little. See, see, that blows me away because I guess I'm so. Old. I know how iconic yeah. Paul Newman is, yeah. and right, I know he's regarded as one of the go- like greatest out there, top twenty actor, top thirty actor. Maybe even top ten for you. You would have to. Let uh, well, me know. he's probably. I would say he's he's one of my favorite actors. You yeah, know, he's he's up there. He's in the top three. You Steve know. McQueen. You love Steve McQueen. Not a big Steve McQueen. Really? Okay. Not, not, not a big Steve McQueen. Don't like we, the Great Escape. Yeah, you know, we, we were talking about Steve McQueen. You know, you know, I mean, because um, uh, we were talking about 
basically me and Mike were talking about, and I was asking, who do you prefer, Steve McQueen or, or Paul, Paul Newman? Paul Newman. And, you know, Steve McQueen, he's that, you know, he's, he's, he's that badass. He's, he's, right, that, he's yeah. that dude. The cool guy. Yeah, he's yeah. the cool slick dude. slick hair, the leather jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Almost you know. like a James Dean kind yeah, of way. Not right. as, like, rebelish, but. Yeah, it's just it's hardcore. He, he's the type of dude that, that would try to hook up with your girlfriend. Yeah. Right. You know, I, yeah, mean, you know, yeah. he's, I mean, Paul Newman is the type of dude that you have a beer with yeah. and you hang out and have a good time with. Yeah. Right. So I've, I've never been a big Steve McQueen guy, but he's a, he's a great actor. Was you know? Paul Newman and I'm. I got a feeling he was, but I don't really know. Was he in the original, The Great Gatsby? Who was still leading that? Uh, that was actually Robert Redford. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And um, they they actually uh, they actually um, they actually partner partnered up on a couple of films. Uh, they were uh, they did Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Okay, yeah, oh, okay. Iconic. I mean, I think you guys. Would, I, I I know you would love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then they did a movie called The Sting, and it was just basically um, a couple of con men uh, uh, cunning some mobsters. And so okay, con, I could probably get into something like that. It was yeah, very, for sure. very good. You know, so um, you know, I, I just. Uh, you know, I, I love those older films, you know, and honestly, and, you know, one thing, you know, and, and and it depends on your taste. And I think that, you know, I think because some some people can find the older films a little slow or a little, you know, a little. I tend to be like that. Yeah. I don't like to be like that, but mm. I think maybe I just haven't watched enough yeah. of the classic films like that. Uh, like The Godfather is one of my favorite films. The one and two, three is like, uh, you know, but uh, one and two is phenomenal, you know. And 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 I think that you would you would really you know you would really um, I think that I think probably both of you would love um, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Sundance Kid, it's it's really it's a great uh, it's a great movie. Cool Hand Luke is is an is an excellent movie, and then um, The Sting is excellent. uh, just talking about Steve McQueen, and we we're talking about it was funny because you know um, when when me and Mike was you know talking about comparing Steve McQueen and, and Paul Newman, uh, there was a story that I heard that uh, that um, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the Magnificent Seven. Yeah, I seen the, the Steve McQueen's in that, right? Yes, yes, that's the original. Yeah, I seen the original, I think, but I haven't seen the remake. So I think I've watched the parts of the remake. Right. Yeah. Who's in the remake? Is Denzel. It, uh, Denzel, Walker, yeah. yeah. For some reason, I wanted to say Idris Elba, but yeah, mm-hmm. it was Denzel. Right. And um, who's the guy from the Guardians of the Galaxy? Chris Pratt? Yeah, Chris Pratt yeah. was in I like Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah I like too. Chris Pratt. Yeah, also. yeah, he's a very likable guy. Uh, but what was so... Um, but uh, th- there's a th- there's a little story on on the um, about the filming of the original Magnificent Seven that uh, Steve McQueen and Yul Brenner was... Uh, constantly trying to you know upstage one another you know okay. basically you know they wanted to you know they, be the guy they want to be the guy yeah have the coolest scenes and yeah. all that stuff and it was just and they were just uh they were just you know constantly on set trying to you know uh you know outdo each other and and it was funny because a few years later uh steve mcqueen and paul newman actually was in a film together uh, oh, not okay. a great film, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, the Towering Inferno, and it was funny because um, the producers were a little nervous. Like, who who who, who are we gonna put? You know, top billing. You know, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Who's gonna be on like the yeah, billboard? Who yeah, are we gonna push yeah, the commercials? Yeah, yeah. But... What, what name is gonna go up top? And it was funny because uh, Paul Newman was like, "Scott, I don't care." You know, what I mean, he was cool. He was like, he didn't care. You know, so I, I like that. You know, I like that just that type of mentality you know yeah not like trying to go back and forth and like like no yeah. i'm gonna be the yeah, one i'm gonna yeah, be, yeah. I'm gonna be yeah. so because i guarantee you steve mcqueen would not have yeah right uh, would not have like, the clash yeah. so with reservoir dolls being your favorite quentin film what is his what do you think his best film is <sighs> it's a tough answer on the it's spot. a tough, tough answer, answer yeah spot. i don't yeah. put you on the spot but yeah it is a tough answer because I think it's down to. It's down to three for me. Three. Okay, what what do you guys got? Uh, the three that you see in here, with Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs, and Glorious Bastards. Yeah, that's what I would do. I think that's my top three. Yeah. You gotta definitely have to appreciate Reservoir Dogs because the low budget yeah. and just getting the maximum amount of, you know, how good it the film was with the least amount of production. Yeah. But I think. For me, Pulp Fiction is definitely the most iconic. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, everyone knows Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. Some people might not know Reservoir Dogs. You know, some people might not have seen Inglorious Bastards. But for me, the best film he had was Inglorious Bastards. It's so well written. I think with when he had when he finally got the money 
I mean, he definitely got the money mm-hmm. with Pulp Fiction, but I think that it's just more it's it's well acted with you know Brad Pitt, Christoph Waltz in that film Christoph is Waltz. Yeah. is next level. I mean, when I saw Christoph Waltz in Django and and uh, and Glorious Bastards, instant fan. Yeah, because when he walks in, I think that's the best opening scene in cinema history. When he walks in. To that little shack, yeah, to and the people are under the floorboards. You can feel the tension in that room, yes, and how scared the guy, the homeowner, is, and and he's very polite, you know. But he, you can feel, and the best part is, he knew they were under the floorboard the, the whole, whole time, time. Yeah. 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 and yeah, you can just you feel scared for that family. You're like, oh my gosh, what's this? Is a Quentin film? What is going to happen here? Yeah. Yeah, and Glorious Bastards is probably my favorite film of all time. I mean, it definitely is, but I want to say that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I think I'm going to take Reservoir Dogs as his greatest. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I respect I, it's that. Hard, it's hard to top that, man. Yeah. I mean, and especially with the cast, I mean, it was just loaded with talent, man. Yeah. And I think we say, like, yeah, it's loaded with talent because he made those guys, like, mm. he made those guys that yeah. good. The script yeah. was perfect. And and I and I think you just because like you were saying before, just because of its budget, it leans so much on you know on, great writing, on writing, writing, good you know, acting. It, yeah, it just it really was, you know. And like you said, I mean, just the sets that they had, like it was, it, it was, was like five sets total. I think you know, it, it was a very just uh, visceral, very you know. For, so I'd have to agree with you as far as I would say, you know. Um, the best Reservoir Dogs. Now, I, I want to ask you guys, how do you guys feel about um, Kill Bill? Oh, oh, we love Kill Bill. <laughs> the first time I watched I Kill, Kill Bill, Bill I think it was like 2008 or nine. It was instantly my favorite film. Mm. I love yeah. Kill Bill. One and two. Yeah. And it's know, so ridiculous. It, it is. So ridiculous. But it's supposed to be. Yeah. And it's so, the thing about Kill Bill for me is, um, it, if you take them together, they're awesome because the first one, you know, when I first saw the first one, you know, it, it, it when when he when when I saw the sack one, it just really made it into it a feel like a movie, a movie. Yeah, you know, the first one yeah. feels like it's missing the second, second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You need it one. because it was like it was a little bit too over the top for me. Yeah, but then when you actually, you know, you meet Bill, you get, you know, you get to know the story right. what's really going on. Then it just it just becomes you know such a you know such a good you know. Uh, you know, a, a great film, and not to mention her pulling the girl's eyeball out. Oh, the, oh, oh so oh, good! It's so good. She squishes it with her toes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. it's so ridiculous. Yeah. And imagine being left like that. Oh know? my! In the trailer, she's just like in the yeah, just like going crazy, can't see. And then like oh, showing her man. backstory after she did, you know, get out of the hospital and meet, or immediately went to that uh, the monk. And started training, and then she used the punch. Oh to yeah, break the, yeah, get out of the coffin. Oh yeah, yeah. it's so ridiculous. But yeah, I love it. Yeah, man. it was. Yeah, and yeah, I love that scene where there, where she is bur- burring through the yeah. ground. Yeah, it is so. Awesome. It's like yeah. I want to say that Kill Bill is Quentin Tarantino's most Quentin Tarantino film. Yeah, it almost seems like. Yeah, it almost seems like that. So, but Pulp Fiction to me, I would probably have to go with like his the most Quentin film because it's. It is loaded with like so many references and like having John Travolta in there dancing, doing a dance competition <sighs> yeah. with Emma Thurman. Like, yeah. yeah, it's and it's got boxing in it. It's got like betting yeah. in it. It's got everything. Yeah, it it's got, got everything. everything. Yeah, it's got everything. And with with Pulp Fiction, it seemed like you really had no idea when they cut to the next scene with like, I mean, we all know about the Gimp suit and yeah. like, oh like, yeah, that whole never scene. You yeah. never saw that. Coming. And that was yeah. in the nineties too, so it's like. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, yeah, yeah everybody's I mean, like, to, Whoa. to watch a movie like that, it was like, what the heck? But it, yeah. was, it was, it was, it was. Especially coming from like coming from the off 80s. the eighties, where yeah. it was like Footloose and and uh, super PC, super like mm. kind of the eighties didn't the eighties films didn't really do it for me like that. <laughs> you know, it was there's I mean there's some in there that I really mm. really love. You know, like some like the old classic Star Wars and mm, yeah. well, and Back to the Future was the eighties, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some yeah. good films in the eighties, mm. but for me, like some of the popular Indiana ones, like Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones was good. I liked Indiana Jones. But it was still like super like borderline family friendly stuff. Yeah. But it was also coming from the seventies where like horror and slashers were like Big. getting a little outrageous. Yeah. Like Yeah, I, yeah, and I, yeah, I think with the seventies too, you had um, you know, I think that, you know, you had a lot of pushing the edge a little bit more. A uh-huh. lot right. of, you know, a lot of talented filmmakers that was coming out and I think with the eighties it was just more of a pulling back where the studios Yeah and then the nineties was like, all right, let's yeah, get back yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh yeah, Kill Bill. How do you feel about uh Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I liked it. I, I, I liked, liked it. it. I like now you, you know, I would say this and this is probably, you know, I, I the the best 
of course scene in the movie was when uh Brad Pitt is at the ranch. And, I agree. And you don't know what's going to happen. I agree. I mean, it is the most it's it's like a horror film. And and I wish that you know if there was more of that. That's where he's going to go with this. I don't like I don't I mean I like the the film, but to me it's one of my least favorite films by by Quentin and that scene is one of the reasons why. Okay. Because you have all this you you've already built all this dialogue up to this moment and you got you got Brad Pitt around all these like cult followers the tension's there you're like this is a Quentin film what's about to happen they build it up they build it up they build it up and he just kind of walks out of there by all he did was like punch a guy in the face yeah. I was like I was kind of expecting a little bit more and maybe Quentin knows that so he kind of went the like the opposite yeah. way but yeah for me it was kind of a bit of a letdown and it was kind of missing just that the action that you get in a Quentin film, the kind of like uncomfortableness that you get from an eye being pulled out, the ear getting cut off in Reservoir Dogs. Uh, well, I will say he made up for that with the ending scene. He did. He did. Oh, that is. And I remember watching that in the theaters, and that was it was kind of weird because at that time I was like uncomfortable watching like Grindhouse stuff, yeah. which I went through a stage of my life where I loved all that. Mm. And then I was like, there was that two year period for some reason it made me so uncomfortable. And so watching that in the theaters, I was like, I was uncomfortable watching it. The dog food to the nose, where yeah. he just broke and the bridge, yeah, and then he's like bashing her head into the yeah. uh, oh, chimney. Man. I love the how fireplace. he's just not scared to just tow that line, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. Nah, there's no toe in the line. Yeah. That's, that's he's that's over it, yeah. yeah. He just like broad jumped it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've always liked. Uh, I've always liked Quentin. Now, I've I've only watched this film once, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, The Hateful Eight. I actually really love I really the like the Wow. Play too. I love the Hateful Eight. I understand why people don't like it. Okay. But Samuel Jackson and Walton Goggins' character keeps me coming back. Okay. Especially Walton Goggins. Oh, I mean, Samuel Jackson, too. I don't honestly know which one I like more in the film, which character, because Walton Goggins is so like. He's so Samuel likeable. Jackson is full of shit, and Walton Goggins knows he's full of shit. Mm. And then they are just like, it's a constant battle yeah. of them. And then they end up having to partner together. They're partnering the together. And when Samuel Jackson hands in the pistol and they've got their hands up against the wall, the shit eating grin on Walton Goggins' face to know, yeah. like, he's all right. Yeah, you they know? both know. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I've hated this dude this whole time, and he's the only one I could trust the yeah. whole time. It's just like, yeah, his comedic relief in that film, Walton Goggins, is so much fun. The President of the United States of America. Yeah, where he, like, the Lincoln <laughs> ladder was so much fun. And then, uh, you know when he's he 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 like hates on Michael Madsen's character. He could, you know it could be it could be the ugliest son of a bitch in here. Uh, <laughs> you know whatever Michael Madsen's character's name was. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. The first time I watched it, I was a little on the fence. Well, I'm gonna have to give it another chance because I've only watched it once. You know, and so you know I, I, maybe I need to give it another chance. You know, and, yeah. just, and um, I think like all the things you appreciate about Reservoir Dogs with like only having like a few sets. That's exactly what Hateful Eight is, where yeah, it's yeah. it's not much of like it's not a huge amount of scenery. Like you have obviously like the snow trail at the beginning, uh-huh. and that's it. It's that snow trail, and then it's like the basement, and then it's the cabin. Yeah, that's like the entire film. Yeah, so it's like fully dependent on dialogue and like these stories that make you want to like you're like really getting inside the minds of the characters. I like uh, I like it more than I liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I like it less than. All the Inglorious Bastards, Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs, now, Django. Now tell me this. The biggest thing about the um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is that you just felt that, you know, he just didn't, the payoff wasn't as as, as good right. as you would like. Yeah, I wanted a little bit more action in that film. And I'm not really I like an action that. guy. I really love dialogue. I can go a whole film without seeing action. But for me, I just, it was kind of missing like, Something it was missing a, like I needed a little I bit. I think more. one of the things about that movie too, especially the scene that you were talking about with Brad Pitt at the ranch. Uh, Brad Pitt is such a colorful character. Like, he's a very dark character, but he has all these colorful clothes and yeah. he's got the pretty haircut. He's a yeah. stunt man. Yeah, and then he goes to this ranch and it's just gloom and like Doom, death yeah. and like like poverty and it's like uh, such a dirty, nasty environment. And he's clean guy in this badass car and it's like it's such a like he pops. His character pops yeah. so much. And it's like it's such a visually pleasing scene, and he's going to see his friend. Yeah, and they're building tension to like wh- what? If, what he, what's going what on in the house? To his friend? What? Yeah. What they, and you walk in there, and he's just like laying in there. Yeah. I don't know. It kind of let me down. That scene let me down. It, it, yeah, I, yeah. I think that because the tension was so great, you know, it was such a you know, like you said, it was such a tension filled uh, filled 
you know, scene is just uh, – so I can understand why you could have been let down. It's still good. It's know. still a good movie. There just wasn't enough feet for you? It wasn't enough feet. Yeah, is there, <laughs> there, is, a, there is a feet two. scene. Is there two? Yeah, there's one where uh, Margaret, Margaret Qualley – that's the uh, armpit hair girl, right? Yeah. She's so she car. put her feet up in the car, yeah. and then Margot Robbie puts her feet up in the movie theater. Oh yeah, I forgot Margot yeah. Robbie is in there. She's like yeah, the, she's Sharon uh, Tate. Yeah, Sharon Tate. That's right. Uh, have you Have you guys seen Death Proof? Yeah, I like. I think. I think by default, it's Talk probably. Yep. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Death Proof. Uh, have you seen it? I don't think you've seen. I it. I haven't seen it. No. I think it's. I got to put it last on this list, but I really like. I really like it. Yeah. It's. It's. Uh. You know. I would, you know, I, he, I would put it toward the bottom, but it's just a, it's a so good, good grindhouse film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grindhouse. and that's why I like, I really like Kill Bill because it is kind of has those parts of grindhouse that you expect from Quentin, like in Glorious Bastards when he's shooting the when he's shooting Hitler, or in oh, yeah. Pulp Fiction where it's like the Gimp scene and it's like you get those sick moments and Kill Bill is that a little more, but like still has the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that scene in uh in Glorious Bastards where Eli Roth Yeah, Eli Roth. He's got the Tommy gun and he, or the uh Thompson and he's like he's got the like the look in his eyes of like I'm just taking him out and you just see him like just shooting down in there. It's like you feel the energy and from And he's not doing it because obviously he's doing it because he hated Hitler, but yeah. he's also just a murderer. Yeah. yeah. He's oh, a killer. Yeah. He's a stone cold yeah. killer. Yeah. The bear Jew. And all this scene oh, where man. Where uh, he's beating the bat in the tunnel, yeah. and he's Beep. like, do you, I mean, obviously the guy who's about to get his head crushed in knows who the bear Jew is, yeah. and he's got the metal on his chest, and he goes, where'd you get the metal from, for? And he said, bravery. And he wasn't giving up his, his buddies where the location of his buddies were. And you're like, oh, man, he's really going to die for the cause. You know, it's such a it, – And then the next, just, and he know, and the next guy just goes up and tells. Oh, oh, it makes you, it makes you so – And it's like bad because it almost makes you like – pull for the Nazi in that moment where you're like, you see like you like that character. Cause he's like, he's being the hard ass. He's like, and then you're upset that the other guy told, even though they were the clear bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. That you're upset that he told because that guy died for the cause, yeah. even though it's so awful. And that's what Quentin Tarantino does so well is make yeah. you pull for that. Like the evil or the bad guy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, especially with the opening scene in Reservoir Dolls, I thought was very well written when he's talking about, you know, you got the the whole Madonna conversation was like, huh, it gets your brain working a little bit. And then Steve Buscemi comes with like, I don't tip. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And then you're like, wait a minute. You see, you're like, you don't tip. And it's just like that whole little thing. Because there are people out there who have yep. that opinion. So yep. already That's from crazy. the jump, he's getting your mind like, yeah. no, you should tip or you shouldn't tip. You know, he, he gets, you know, the controversy rolling. I think that's always yeah. fine. Yeah. It's just a, this, that just iconic um a dialogue that he had and you know the mr pink you know yeah and, you know just right the, you know the, yeah. why can't you i want to be mr blue well yeah, i can't yeah. you know you can't be mr blue you're mr pink yeah so <laughs> you still doing uh theater no i have not lately i have i'm i'm, I'm working on a little I, I am doing a little writing you know um but uh it's uh is I'm not at a point to where we want to talk about it but i am okay yeah, what I got am. you into like theaters and like writing and stuff like that um you know, uh, just, uh, you know, I, I, I always loved writing, mm -hmm. you know, I always loved writing. And, um, to be honest with you, when, when I first, uh, when I first started, uh, the first, first actual shows that I started doing was actually at, at, at my old church okay. and we'd do, uh, you know, I don't, I don't remember, but someone asked me to do a black history program. Okay. And uh, I did, uh, you know, we did a couple of skits, you know, I wrote a couple of skits and, um, and I got a couple of UPSers at the time nice. to be in it, you know, and we had such a good time. Yeah. I mean, we had so much fun, you know, and, and so, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, you do it, you really enjoy doing it. And, and like, and we, you know, we did it that year, then we did it the following year, you know, and uh, we just couldn't wait for you know the next year to come around and we said hey well why don't we just you know uh start doing it and start you know uh doing it at other churches and stuff so it is is really fun um yeah i can see you being like having your own theater right and you know plays every week or something like that having like a crew of cast members yeah. to come in i think that would be very interesting to see you in that setting you know it's it's crazy because you know i've i've 
you know, growing up, you know, I had a horrible stutter, you know, and I was mm-hmm. always like, you know, nervous, you know, um, you know, of course, getting in front of people and you know, right. speaking, it could be terrifying. And stuff, you know, and I and I remember just, um, you know, the, the thing that helped me was the desire to, you know, to express yourself overcame that fear yeah for you know? sure because you know that. you're we terrified talk about stuff like that yeah, you, know, you know because you're like you know like you know you know you know you, you're thinking am i gonna get up there and i'm not gonna be able to say anything yeah but also too there's also something uh fantastic about you know being you know being a character you know um because you don't I, have to play yourself you can enter a mindset yes. and play a character and you know what like i can this isn't me. This is the character. You enter that mindset and you can kind of feel it and kind of get that energy out. You know, I don't know. It's, 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 I can see it being a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, I would say um, there was, a, there was a, a silly skit that we did. You know, this was, I think it was the very first show that we did. And it was, uh, we called it It's Not Easy Being Black, you know. Okay. And uh, we were, it was me, uh, Rodney Brewer, and Scott McIntyre. And I know you guys don't know, know them. I'm just giving them a shout out. But they used to work at UPS years ago. And we played little kids, you know. Okay. And um, basically, you know, uh, basically it was uh, two white kids with a black kid. Yeah. And, you know, and it basically they're giving me a hard time. Okay. And, um, and you know, we're playful. And, and basically at the very end I sing this song, It's Not Easy Being Black. You okay. Know? And it's basically a parody of It's Not Easy Being Green by, you know. Oh, uh, okay. I got Kermit, you. The, Kermit Frog. the Frog. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I remember, you know, because, like, during the whole, you know, during the whole uh, period where we were rehearsing, mm-hmm. you know, everybody else, like, our rehearsals were closed. We would not let anybody see what we are doing, you know. And, you know, and so because we wanted, we wanted, you know, we, we didn't want anybody to know what we're doing. And we're playing kids. We're goofy. And everybody was laughing. Right. And and I just remember, um, I just remember that, you know, we, we, we were being so silly that the audience, you know, it was like, you know, you, you, you felt like sometimes like when you write something and, you know, the laughs are like right where you expected the laughs to be. And it's like that perfect, you know, everything is like absolutely, absolutely, absolutely yeah. perfect. And I remember because this is probably as, as you know, the 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 first time we performed it because we performed it a lot of times out of that. But the first time we performed it was absolutely perfect because I remember we were um, we were, you know, we had, we had we, we you know, we were doing our little stick, you know, and everybody was laughing. And then they left me alone on stage and I started to sing, you know, started to sing the song, you know, and I'm singing in this goofy voice, you know, yeah. and, and I'm, and, and it starts out and it's, and it starts out and it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's not easy being black, mm-hmm. you know, uh, spending your life the color of the dark. Now, at this point, you gotta understand that the whole thing, it was, it was so silly. So everybody was laughing, you know, everybody's yeah. had been laughing. And so when I say that line, it sort of, it sort of, you know, sort of got a little more serious. Sh- yeah, sh- it shakes them a little yeah. bit. So, so they're thinking more like, okay, okay, let's enter that mindset. You know, well, at first they're thinking, they're thinking, okay, he's been is, 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 they're thinking, okay, it's a, you know, they're they're thinking maybe it's just a bad, it's a bad note, you know. Yeah. Like, so, so they're still with me. They okay. they still want to laugh. So they're they're, they're gonna hear it out. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're thinking, uh, you know, okay, that's not a funny line, you right, know. Maybe right. you know he he's been he's been doing really good. So he's sort of miss here and there. Yeah, you're gonna you know? miss it here and there. So, yeah. I, you know, so you know, so it's not easy being uh, black, spending your life the color of dark. And then I say because sometimes people think the worst of you because the color of your skin. Now, like, at that, uh, now at that, that was deliberate. Yeah, now yeah. at that point, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, at that point, you know, you go from like crazy laughter to total, you know, sad, mm-hmm. you know, right. you know. And silent. to me, that speaks to good writing. And t- so they're sitting there, and they're like, you know, like, um, you know. And so I say, it's not easy being black, spending life the color of, of the dark, um, because people tend to think the worst of you uh, because of the color of your skin, um, and then. And then I say, um, but, uh, you know, and so everybody said, but then I say, but black is the color of my mom. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, and she can, you know, and she's sweet and friendly. like you right. know. Right. And all of a sudden you had the audience, they were let off the hook. You know, right. you know, all of a sudden, but you for know, a second, you took them on this roller coaster yeah, of emotions, yes. you know, yeah. yeah, there at that moment of like, you know, because it was it was so insane because you have hilarious laughter total misery yeah and then like ah, 
you know, yeah, we could, right. you know, and you know, because I said, you know, uh, because she's the color of my mom, and and it's it's um, and black can be big like Muhammad Ali, or important like Martin Luther King, or small like me. Right. Oh, and, oh that's man. cool. That's good. And, and I like I, that. You know, and I just remember for me that was probably my fav- favorite. You know, moment. You know, in like theater yeah, plays or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like, well, like, like, like I said before, we we did it several times after that. But that was like the perfect moment when you, you know, like you know, sometimes you write something, and um, sometimes like I've, I've written stuff to be co- comedic, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and and you get the people and they're performing it, and, and they can't <laughs> perform, and so you got to make it more serious. Yeah. You know, so this was like one of the few times where you actually write something. And it's like, you know, it's 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 at that perfect moment, you know. And, and everything it, just flowed really yeah, well. Yeah. Where, like, what you intended for the audience to feel, they felt. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it was like, I would say, um, you know, I would say that there's two two moments on stage that I was like, that I felt that, you know. It was like, um, there, there was that. And then uh, I was actually I did a one man show out at Greenville Tech. You know, it's, it was it was called an evening with a man they used to call Bear. And the thing that was so crazy is like, uh, you know, I had a, you know we had the dress rehearsal before, mm-hmm. and then we had the show after. The dress rehearsal was magnificent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> How do we follow that? Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, the show was out. Yeah, you know, the show was out. Okay. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. But I just remember it, it just having that <laughs> moment of, of um, you know, that moment in the dress rehearsal. I mean, there's just only a few people in the audience and stuff. But, you know, but even that moment make, makes it worth it. You know, sometimes when you, you know, um, you know, when you're writing and, and you can be, you know, I remember one time I had a good friend of mine and we were just, uh, we were just, uh, she wasn't in the, she wasn't in, in the, the play, but, uh, we needed somebody to read, you know, just to read the part because the, the girl that was supposed to do the part, she wasn't there. Yeah. So we just had her reading the part, you know, and, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I, I don't think I was in the scene. I was just watching it and, um, she's reading and she starts to cry. And um, and she says, you know, I know how this character feels. Oh, man, oh, she yeah. related. She related yeah. to the character. And, you know, and it's like moments like that is what makes you know, it worth it. Yeah, makes Whether you know, it's successful or not, no, you know, just experience that. Yeah, just oh, that one person, you know. Yeah. One per- I remember one time, too, it, um, we were, um, we had got, you know, talking about it's not easy being black. We had got so cocky with with performing that, and this this, this was good too, <laughs> is that we could not, you know, it was like we we're at a point where we can't mess it up. Yeah, you, know? you can't miss. You can't yeah. because we're, we're we're playing season vets. We're playing kids. We, you know, this is like there's no way you can mess it up. I mean, I would flub my lines, you know, because we could just ad lib because you we're got playing. comfortable and you, you got, got you know got just started getting right. you know, get loose up there. You got a little loose up there. And I remember, uh, you know, Scott couldn't 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 do it. Uh, couldn't do the couldn't couldn't do one of the shows, so we got a, a new guy. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say his name. <laughs> oh, I, don't, no. I don't think he cares, but yeah. I'm not gonna say his name. But he was just you know, uh, but he was the first time he had ever performed in front of anybody, and we were at a church that we had never been before. But his, I mean, it was packed. You know, it was really packed, and 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 I were in in and he was you know. Um, you know, and it was like we're doing kid voices, so we're very confident. And me and Rodney was like, "We got you. Yeah. Don't worry. We got no you. matter what happens, we can gonna, carry the show. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah. You know." And so I, I, I remember we get up there, and uh, the guy is like, "You can't hear him. He's whispering." Oh no! And you're like. Oh my God! Oh no! You know? So we have to repeat every line he's saying. Right. You know, it was so horrible. I mean, but it was it was good because we had got so cocky that you it know, kind so, of brought you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How it felt when like yeah. you were nervous. Yeah, and that some, yeah sometimes yeah, taking yeah, over. You know? Sometimes it's good to be humble because we had to. You know, we had to get through it. You know, and so we got through it. And it was like yeah, but it was it was nothing big, but we got through it. But I I remember what was funny. And I was just thinking, oh, you know, just thinking, 
it was a crap, you know, the show was crappy. You know, it was like at the end of the, you know, I just thought the show was crappy. And I, I do remember there was somebody, a, a, a woman from the audience came and she had tears in her eyes and she said, oh, that was so beautiful. And you're thinking, and you don't really realize sometimes you get so caught up in your own insecurities. Right. That you're not able to to see, you know, to see, to see beauty when it's there. When it's there. You know. Yeah, that's kind of cool because, yeah, when you're like, when you are, you know, the artist or whatever, you're more Focus on yourself. Yeah, and your performance. And your performance and just making sure you do a good job. And then you might have a little slip up here and there. And the audience, you know, they might tend to overlook that. Some some might not. But just to be able to connect to someone, yeah, it makes awesome, it all worth man. it. Yeah. You know, and it kind of, yeah, it's cool that it brought, it brought you back down. And then that one person was like, made it all worth it. Yeah, it you really did. And, and that's how it and, and it was so, you know, um, it, it was fun. You know, it was so fun. And I, it, it was I remember, you know, just it was so great because it's just doing with you, you know, your friends and your family. I, I you know, my mom passed away, you know, um, um, some years back, but she she actually was a little bit of a ham, and I actually had her in a couple of my shows. Really, oh, that's yes. so cool. Man. And it was funny because I, I was I just I was I was terrible because um, <laughs> she would, you know, because uh, she was a little bit of a ham. Yeah. And, and, you know, and one show, she just ad-libbed, you know, doing crazy stuff, you know. And, <laughs> and I ended up taking her part from her. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and my mom would just, just say, she would say, now, if you do it, you need to read his lines the way he wrote it. Because yeah. if not, yeah, he gonna right. do. but I did give her a little thing. I mean, a good a little speech where she could do it by herself. Yeah, right. Which she, you know, so hilarious. I gave her a different part where she could perform freedom of expression to yeah. be yeah. as hammy as she wanted to be. Yeah, but yeah. When but. I hear about people being hams, I always think of two people. I think of uh, Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> and I think of Rob Gronkowski. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> those are like absolutely. the two. It seems like those two guys would be so much fun to hang out with. Yes, yes. And but they're like you know they're on the general commercial. They're like they're yeah, just kind of right. just they don't care. They're just living life, and they seems like they're having a good time. Yeah. You know? Oh, busted. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's fair to say that as far as like acting and films, I think you're by far the most educated person we've had on here. Yeah. For uh, for film and like theater and acting and stuff. So we have a question that we normally ask the guests. Um, if you're gonna create your own film, like you could use any actors in the world. Oh yeah. Um, who's who? You have ma- playing your main characters. And I know this is a very on the spot. Maybe like, like super two broad. leads. Yeah, like two leads. Couple side, couple supporting actors, and then like a bad guy. Uh, and this is such a broad question. It so really is because be like you're like, answer. what kind of film am I making? You know, as a what kind of genre am I gonna put out there? You know. Cause it, it does it does matter, you know. For sure, you don't yeah. you don't put like you know I wouldn't put Denzel in like a slasher film, yeah. right? you know. That's not Hell, maybe though. <laughs> maybe oh, I'm sure though. he would definitely make it yeah. better, but I think it waters down yeah, Denzel's for sure. performance, for sure. you know. You know, it's really weird because I'm trying to think of, um, because I got some you know some ideas that I could toss out, you know. Okay, toss out. We're listening. We got time. Um, but. Um, one moment no you're fine i think for for me i would play my lead i don't know i definitely want christoph waltz as a bad guy see for me i definitely want to and i want leonardo dicaprio playing a bad guy for me really because i feel like you always get so many there's so many films where he is a good guy and you're pulling for him but i really loved his performance in Django. yeah as candy yeah for sure and like, when I feel he like we don't hits get the table breaks his hand and then Improvises the blood all over yes. Broomhilda's face. I mean, if you're Broomhilda's act, I don't know her her real name, but if you're her and you're sitting there, how do you feel when Leo wipes blood all Is over it, uh, your face? Carrie Washington. Yes, yes, you know, maybe. I think it's Carrie Washington. Yeah, Carrie Washington. Okay, yeah, nice, that's nice. Her. Yeah, how do you feel sitting there? Because she doesn't break character, and that would be kind of like cut, cut. What are you doing, man? Well, I don't think. I, I'm not sure if that was like his actual blood that he wiped on her. I know I think that it he is. did bleed, but. Yeah, I don't know if it was okay. Sexual. Maybe I know he not. bled whenever he hit the table, and I think okay. since he started bleeding, they were like, "Oh, we should make it to where he wipes blood on her face." I think they just like improvise. Okay, okay improvise maybe that. so because I, I was always under the impression that it was his real blood, right? But because that seems a little extreme, yeah, for sure. A little, Shaw was always, a little always always wondering like, she did a good job not breaking character there. Right? You know? <laughs> now it's funny. It's funny that you you, you say that um, because. Um, 
you know, one guy I was thinking about that, you know, I guess he's sort of controversial now to talk about, but I was like Will Smith. Oh, um, yeah. I used to love Will Smith. It's yeah. hard to watch him now. Yeah, it really is because, uh, you know, because like, you know, because, you know, at one point, you know, he would be the one of the perfect guys that you would want to have in a film. Especially a blockbuster film. Yeah, yeah, yeah very likable. Because the, the thing with him, I mean, the thing that he used to be able to do to me, um, he could get me. You know, I mean, I'd be watching a film and he'd do something and he'd get me. You know, the pursuit of happiness. He had a pursuit oh, of happiness. Yeah. Oh, my God. That so was good. You know, the, jerk, emotional yeah, film. Yeah. And, and I remember, um, you know, he, he was just such a good, I mean, he is a good actor. But I remember I was watching um, I Am Legend. Yes. And, and, and you know, and, um, and I'm watching the movie and, I'm, I'm, and, I, and, I, say, and I'm, I say to myself, Will Smith, you're not going to get me. You know, you're not gonna right. get me in this movie. Oh, I know what scene you're uh, talking yeah. about. And 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 so 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 uh, so he gets his um, you know he he uh, you know of course it's the vampire zombie apocalypse mm-hmm. and you know and he's trying to find a cure and uh, at one point his dog uh, his dog gets you know oh, gets bit man. And so they're, they're at, you know, so he's, he's holding his dog and he, and, you know, and I'm like, I'm watching it and I'm like, Will Smith, you're not going to get me. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I hardened my heart, you know, mm-hmm. I, I hardened my heart. Cause I was like, well, I gripped them teeth down. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get, that, get that stone face yeah. going. Yeah. 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 Think about, think about roses and yeah. 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 puppies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was happy. And so I, I'm, I'm tough. I, I said, I, you're not going to get me. And, and I remember, um, I remember him, uh, you know, grabbing some syringes to, uh-huh. to, to uh, you know, to try a a a a um a cure for right, his dog. The dog. Now for a moment, I'm like, oh, it's this gonna this work. Way? Does he find the cure? I said, no, 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 you're not getting me. Yeah, you know, right? because you know, because that moment of hope, because I know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And so that moment of like giving me hope when when the dog turns, he's gonna, oh, you know, gosh, it's gonna get man. me. So, you know, so I stay strong. I really stay strong through the whole thing. He actually has to, you know, his dog starts to turn. He has Mm -hmm. to kill his dog, okay? So I make it through that. I'm like, you know, I made it through. I'm like, you didn't get me, Will, you know. I told you. (laughs) I still think I'm, I I still think I know this you're talking about. Yep, yep. And so he, he, so it's the next, I don't know if it's the next day, but he goes to the little uh, shop he always goes to, and there's a mannequin there. And and they had set up earlier where you know yeah. where um you know he he would talk to his dog and say I need to talk to her you know I mean to talk to her like yeah. I mean there's a mannequin it's not a real person yeah. right but he goes to her and he has the courage to talk to her and he just says you know say something say something to me it's like yeah. say something yeah. and the the mannequin it pants to the mannequin and you almost think for a second like is this about to get kind of goofy and the mannequin's yeah. gonna like yeah. move or something yeah right it just sits there. Kind of a fairly long yeah. shot, and it, and he's like, "Say something!" Yeah. Oh, and like, man. You see it, he's yeah. like, he's like, well, he's lost it. Yeah, yeah. and it, and it get, it gets you because he's like, like, oh my, because he says, "I lost my friend." Yes. You know, when he when he says, "I lost my friend," his like mental peace yeah. is and, like, yeah, and I need you to say, I need you to say something. Yes, and it and it got me. Oh so you know, so so you know, so it's so um, that yeah, that scene, the dog scene was brutal. Yeah. You know. But that scene was more, yeah, because it, right, because I had, you know, I had made it by. I mean, so I had, yeah. I had relaxed. And yeah, then, I'm good oh, now. Right. I made it, I made I made it. All and then they them. hit you with yeah. another haymaker. Now, <laughs> oh uh, man. Uh, now I know you probably guys have talked about it, but what have you saw the Chris Rock special? Uh, I haven't. So we haven't saw this Chris Rock special. We've, been talking uh, we've about talked it. about the clip though. We've seen the clip of uh, yeah. of him just obliterating yeah. Will Smith again. I'm and excited about that special. I was such a, I'm such a fan of Chris Rock that that's what made me upset yeah. of, at Will Smith. Yeah. But it was, it's, just, it's just, it was just a low blow. It's sad because Will Smith, I feel like he's kind of a victim of like, you know how people say there's toxic masculinity these days. I think that what a lot of people don't talk about is like toxic femininity. And I think he was kind of well a done. product of that to where, you know, you know, there was some issues with him and his wife and, and I'm sure that kind of affected him psychologically to where he felt like he was maybe less of a man. Yeah. And then once he was getting challenged by Chris Rock, he's like, I need to stand up for my wife. Gets up there and makes and does something that's out of character, really. We don't know. Will Smith's probably not that guy. You know? And then he he you know he gets up there and slaps Chris Rock and for a second when I I remember waking up going, 
Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Let me look at this. And I was like, this has got to be like fake or something. He slapped him. Yes. He slapped shit out of him. Uh, yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, I, I don't think I was watching it, but, you know, you start getting messages. Yeah, and, yeah. And what is you're this? Like, yeah. well, you know, and you, you, you know, and, and you, 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 you look and you see it, but it, it, like, uh, you know, now I, I did see the special. Um, it was, you know, for me, it wasn't awesome, you know. Okay. It wasn't awesome. I'd give it like a B, you know. What was the one before that? Was it Tambourine? Was that was one before that one? Or is there one in between? One I'm or two not, in between? I'm not sure. And to tell you the truth, I'm, I've am i never been a big Chris Rock guy. Really? No. No. I, I Why not? I, you know, I prefer more of, uh, you know, a more of Bill Burr, uh, you know, Dave, Love Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, so I, you know, I, I've always thought Chris Rock was okay, but I've never just been a big Chris Rock guy. Yeah. So I, the main reason I watched it because I really wanted to see the last ten minutes, when see his take on the whole yeah. situation because he hadn't really said anything yeah. about it. And you know, and it's it's funny because it's like it's really weird. You know, you know, we're talking about um, people having different views and different takes. You know, and you know, and I think the things are so different now because you know a lot of people are upset you know people some people were upset at chris rock because it was very weird right you know because he made comments about yeah. being slapped you know and you know and it was so weird because i think sometimes you know you know um you know i i think that sometimes in life you're gonna be offended that's gonna happen and you know Back in the day, you know, back in the day when somebody offended you, you just didn't watch them. You did, right. you know, you, you know, it was just like, you know, um, you know, um, I, I remember this comedian. What, what was his name? I cannot think of his name. Oh, we were, we were, I was just talking about him the other day, but uh, I, I just remember just not liking him, and so I just didn't listen to like him. Like a Sam Kennison? No, it was not. Sam. It was a goofy guy. I cannot <laughs> think of this guy's name. I was just talking about him because we were talking about uh, talking about this exact situation about just like uh, you know uh, trying to counsel Chris Rock because of what he said, and I think that just you know just uh, on the subject of of counselation, I just think that you know it, you know it's all right for you not to like someone, not to want to listen to someone, and just don't. That's, that's where we're at, you know. Uh, I don't go to a Marvel movie and get mad when there's superheroes in there. It's pretty, I mean, you, you're kind of like, you're doing this to yourself in a way. You know, people know, like the Dave Chappelle controversy. Like, Dave Chappelle, why are you spending money to go see Dave Chappelle and then get mad about it when, you when know what I'm saying? A joke. When he makes a joke. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it was, yeah, very bizarre to me. We went out and seen Brian Simpson last night. Do you know how Brian Simpson is? No, no. He's a... Uh, comic out of california hilarious and he's a, he's a black comic out of california and we get into we get to the comedy zone last night it's like 20 bucks and a lot of white people there kind of shot me i, I feel, feel like it would have been more 50 50 <laughs> uh -huh. and brian simpson was like going in on like kind of the crowd and i thought he was hilarious it was hilarious it was so good. <laughs> but but I could tell, like, some of these southern guys around here. They were so uncomfortable. They were so <laughs> uncomfortable. And I thought it was so funny, man. I thought you would have really so enjoyed good, that, man. man. And who was, was, so was the uh, female comic? Uh, Coco Fresh. Coco Fresh. Apparently, she does some, uh, like, HBO. She was apparently on HBO, oh, HBO Max. Yeah. She, I, I never heard of her before, but she was so funny. Yeah, she was good. Yeah, you should check out Brian Simpson. I think he would like he's, he can, he's kind of not, not necessarily dark, but... Uh, he can be. It's not. Uh, it's not not dark. Yeah. Okay. It's not not dark. He can be a little raw sometimes, but uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really that. good. Yeah, he we need really to go funny. out to. Yeah. He's a big Bill Burr fan. Uh, okay. Just saying yeah. yeah. Okay. Of course. Did you uh, watch his special at Red Rocks? I don't think I've seen. Came out twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. It yeah. came out like I want to say August. Yeah. It was late twenty twenty two. He put out that. Uh, Bill Burr with friends on mm, Netflix. Yes. I, I, have, I really seen that. enjoyed that. I one. haven't seen that one. Yeah, I liked uh, Michelle Wolf off that cast. Yeah, and there was another lady. I don't know if you've her. seen that. No, Bill Burr with friends, you'd like it. They just do like he brings up all his like certain friends, like comics that he really loves. Like gives them ten minutes, and then the next mm. one comes out. But man, there's some killers in there. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna take that. Out. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, uh, but going back to you, you said you you had, you had a stutter. You were scared to go on stage. I kind of relate to that a little bit because I have like a small stutter. When I like growing up. I never really had the confidence to like look people in the eye when I talked to them. 
I kind of had a small stutter and I always want to help people get that confidence yes. in those social skill, skills. And me and Brian was talking uh, last night at Kilpatrick's little bar after the show. And we got, we got, we got a couple friends who kind of struggle socially and he put it in perspective. His perspective was like, it's like you're trapped in a basement. All you have to do is not, not necessarily trap, but you're in a basement and all you got to do is walk up the stairs, open the door. And then there's the sun shining on, like you can break through some people have these anxieties and all these. It's like for me, it's like there's a wall of ice. It feels like there's a wall of ice that these people feel like you got to chisel through. But really, it's like a paper wall. You just got to walk through it, yeah. and it's hard to just automatically have that confidence. You're right. But uh, but once you kind of like finally get that confidence, you're like, it was this easy the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys are absolutely right because I think that sometimes, you know, the, the fear of rejection you know, can, you know, can be so strong yeah. that, that you don't allow yourself to be accepted, you right, know, right. and, you know, and, and, and so, so sometimes in life, you know, it, it can be, you know, you can, you can, you can, um, there, there, there's always a risk that you may be rejected. Yeah. You know, right, there there right. is a risk there that, is. that something bad could happen. But if you don't try, if you don't, you know, if you don't, you know, try, you, yeah. you, you will, you are a hundred percent guaranteed. You're going to be in that dark cellar. You're going to stay in that room. Yeah. You're, you're never going to get out room. and you're going to be going to hold those anxieties and okay. depression, all that. Yeah. And, and if you just try, you know, imagine, you know, I mean, what's the, I mean, because like you, you, you gotta do the, you know, you gotta do the math, you know, um, you know, I can hundred percent guarantee that I'm not gonna, you know, you know, have an opportunity to meet new people or yeah, have yeah. new adventures. Wayne Gretzky, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so, um, Michael Scott, <laughs> <laughs> you watch the office. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. It's yeah, cringe it's humor. Great. I don't know it's if you great. are good with cringe humor, but um, I, had to, I had to say yeah, it. I had yeah, to say yeah, it. for sure. Yeah, the office is one of my favorites. Yeah, I think uh, it's tough for people, man. Uh, I've noticed my mental health, I've mentioned on the podcast uh, a couple episodes, and I've noticed my mental health is at like an all-time peak, you know, and I start to see, I've started to notice like my friends and like people around me, they're kind of suffering mentally. And it's like these like these hurdles I can't get over mentally, and it's like I I want to help them. Yeah, you know I want to I want them to be happy. I want to see them thrive, and it's kind of yeah, it's kind of interesting that I'm trying to. I mean, I don't know how to really tell them how to get there. Yeah, you know, because it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to self analyze already, but it's hard. I mean, I can't really. It's hard to, you know, I'm not a therapist or nothing like that. But yeah, it, it sucks to see your the people around you struggle mentally with like anxiety and depression and you know, the news, whatever the news is pushing on the people that affects yeah. people too. You know, it's, uh, it's something that's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, I read something last night that said a lot of people want to focus on their goals, but really you need to focus on the habits that'll get you to your goals. Yeah. So like you can't expect to, you know, I want to be a billionaire. Well, you can't wake up every morning and then sleep till 11 AM. Mm, right. And then, keep your room messy and not clean mm. your car and you can't do all these things and expect to be a super successful person. You've got to start the day off with positivity. You got to get up and work out. You got to take care of yourself, your environment, everything. That's just a start. So you got to have those good habits. Yeah. You know, the, the one thing that, you know, um, I like to say is action promotes like action. Okay. So if you, uh, like you said, if you get up, work out, you know, uh, you know, work out, uh, then one day, the next day, you're more likely to do that. If you stay in bed and sleep late, you know, whatever action you do, you're going to promote that. So, so, I agree with that. so, you know, so the key thing in life is just, you know, is just doing those small, like you said, those small actions that's going to, that's going to build habits. You know, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, um, I think that the bathroom. I think I think for um, give me a water. I think for uh, for 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 me for me personally, I I you know I've um, I just uh, I'd been 
my um, I would say last year uh, my aunt passed away, and I've okay. been taking care of her for the past few years. You know, she yeah. had suffered suffered from a little bit of dementia, and um, to be honest with you, I was struggling. Yeah, it, it, it was it was it was very uh, very challenging. You know, a lot of responsibility. You know, you know, and I think that you know, um, you know, I you know, I was just uh, mentally exhausted. You know, when she passed when she passed away, you know, um, it, it was for me. It was really weird because I had been, you know, and some I, you know, I'd been taking care of her, and and I would say, for the majority of my life, I've I've taken care of somebody. Yeah, I got and, you. And for the first time, you know, for the first time in forever, yeah, I didn't have anybody to take care of. And it was like, and I had to say, okay, what what am I gonna, you know, what am I gonna do? You know, how you know, right. you know, all of a sudden, you know, you've got free time, you can, you know, there's yeah. you know, there's not, you know, you're not you're not like sometimes I say, Oh, um, you know, um uh especially during the pandemic situation, you know. Um, you know, Newsom would say, "Hey, you want to come over and do such and such?" And I said, "I'm I'm a little concerned because if I go, I don't want to bring anything back home." Yeah, right. So you know, so for the first time, I was like, you know, you know, I didn't have like these limitations, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, sure. And so you know, for me, you know, just trying to to start, you know, focusing on okay. What do you want to do? You know what you know. You what get, do you want to do? Yeah. What, what yeah. do you want to do? So you know. So just you know, just focusing on writing, focusing on, um, uh, just being you know around the people that you love and that you care about. You know, and I think that's 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 very important because I think sometimes you know I think it's easy, you know, especially if you get older. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that you guys are at a good age, but I think that once you get to a certain state, you know, a certain age, especially you know, get older like I am. You know, you sometimes it's easy to get set in your way. In your ways. And, you know, and so is, you know, it's um so it's very important that, you know, that you do, you know, that you do um open yourself up, do challenge yourself to do different things and, you know, and to, you know, and to um to uh to cherish the people, you know, that that love you. You know, because, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't know, you know, and you know, you're talking about, you know, um getting down, you know, sometimes you don't know, you don't realize the people that you do have in your life, Yeah, you know, and you don't realize, you know, the, you know, the family and, you know, and, and the, and the friends that really do care about you and love you. And I think it's very important that, you know, that, uh, you, uh, you, you, you take the time to, you know, connect. I, I, you know, it was, it was funny because this was something small. Um, I was, uh, I, I, you know, I went to, um, I went over my, my cousin's house for a Super Bowl, you know, and um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's my cousin. She has, uh, she has uh, two daughters and, uh, you know, two sons and, uh, and, and another cousin was there. And I was just, you know, I was just, you know, and I went over, you know, just to watch the game. And I just, just was, just shocked at how loving a family they were. You know, I mean, just they just it was so sweet and so nice. And um, and I, I think that you know it's important to realize you have that. You have that, yeah. right? You got something? No, go ahead. I, I was going to say that like <clears throat> the new generation coming up now. Is kind of suffering from a social disorder because we're stuck. They're stuck. We're stuck in our house. Yeah. You know, we're always looking at on social media, and everything on social media is people living lives that they really don't live. Yeah. You know, with like the Kardashians, everybody wants to be flashy. Everybody wants to be put off like they're some kind of, I don't know, mini celebrity in a way. Mm-hmm. So when you're sitting back and watching it, and you're, you know, you you might have like soft spoken tendencies, very shy. It is kind of hard to come out and beat yourself when everybody seems like they're doing amazing. Yeah. Because you stay on social media and you lack those social skills because your communication with people is online. Mm-hmm. You know, 
I think that's one thing that I'm very I'm very thankful that I was born like in the nineties because I got to get those social like those human human interactions in early. But I think that uh, t- if you want to surround yourself with what you're talking about, as far as people who love you and support you, I think that you sh- should not necessarily. I don't think you should. I think you should just worry worry about just being yourself. That's the first step. Once you like get comfortable in your own skin and who you are, don't try to put on some kind of fake persona for social media or be somebody that you're really not. Then the people that come into your life are going to love you for who you are, mm-hmm. not not who they think you are, who you are who you to be. are trying to yeah. be. Yeah. So and then that's how you can kind of learn some you know comfortableness and some. Uh, I don't know. I can see where uh, you uh, can find like those loving members around you who truly love you for who you are. Yeah, you know, you know, know, um, the one thing that I noticed, especially about younger people, Mm -hmm. you know, is that you know when 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 you get when you're older, you know, especially you know old heads like (laughs) like like me, you know, you know, we'll talk about you know um, the the old days, you know, of how how tough things were and how, you yeah, know, hard you know, and yeah. it was like, there was no participation trophies yeah, and stuff like, yeah, yeah. you know, all that crazy stuff. But the one thing that I, I've, I've noticed about, you know, especially a lot of young people, um, you know, and uh, when, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, because, you know, of course, you know, I, I deal with a lot of young people at work mm-hmm. is that, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, especially with the young is that they're beating themselves up so much inside and that when you correct them, you know, it's not, they're not just hearing you. They're hearing that voice in their head. They're hearing that voice in their head that's telling them that, Hey, they're a piece of crap. They're not, they're not, you know, and, and so you've, so, you know, so especially people of our generation, we've got to be mindful of that. Yeah. You don't see enough of that from your generation. You see a lot of uh, dismissiveness, a lot of uh, criticism, but I think that, I think that's just humans in general, honestly, yeah. because people are going to dismiss what they don't know. And, and you know, and, and and I think it's important that you know because I, I think that um, that you know I, I I'm not a big fan of the term you know um, uh, sensitivity. Okay. You know, I prefer the term respect. Okay. Because, um, you know, because respect can go always, you know, you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because and I, I think that the one thing that we've got to do as as, um, you know, you know, as as people is just respect, you know, respect each other. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's very important, especially with young people, um, you want to, you know, you, you, you want to. um still instill discipline in them you still want them to understand right the difference between right and wrong i think sometimes you know you don't want to go overboard and be ridiculous but also you you, you do want to make sure that that um you can't be you know you can't be afraid to let someone know this is unacceptable right you know yeah and, and you know and and they've got to have you know just to try to you know instill enough um confidence in them so that they can you know, um, be corrected or, or, or helped. And Take that. more like uh, constructive criticism, I yes, guess, in a way. That's, that's exactly I think that. another thing with that, too, is how um, there's been such an exponential growth in the use of technology from that generation to a lot of the kids that, you know, are my age. And so they see all these things on social media and they are affected by it in such an impactful way. But the parents don't understand they, they really never, don't. They don't have to go through that. Yes. So yes. now there's that lack of communication between the parents and the adult where a son or a daughter doesn't know how to say, hey, this is how it makes me feel, and I don't really know why. And then the parent can be like, oh, this is why. Mm-hmm. But they can't say that because they don't. Yeah. So there's such a like disconnect between communication between uh, parents and children, and especially with this generation, a lot less than there was before because there's such an exponential change of how – how we like how I grew up versus how like the generation that's coming up now is like completely different. Yeah. Like the kids that whenever, like in 20 years from now, like the kids that are going to be my age are going to be, they grew up. That's all they've ever seen was technology. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a massive, 
uh, they're go- th- this gen- this new generation coming up is going to so uh, struggle massively with social disorders. But I think that it won't be as bad as the generation. Like we see the guys that do struggle now because of social media. I think it'll be a little easier for the next generation just because their parents will understand because they grew ah, up with those okay. technologies yeah, too. I could see that. So I they'll have that. more answers than mm, yeah. the parents that didn't grow up with it like yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because you don't hear a lot of guys that are your age and from like that time who have those hardworking tendencies, those uh, kind of old school mentality who are open-minded like you are. You know, I feel like you're always working on yourself and uh, and trying to find new ways of thinking and, and things like that. I always thought that was pretty interesting. Well, you know, I think that, you know, it's it's easy, you know, it's, you know, the young and the old. I, I think that, you know, I think it's easy to get set in our ways and, you know, and and um, and not listen, you know, because I think it's very important to listen mm-hmm. to, you know, people it be their old older or be they 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 they're younger than you are. Um, you know, I think one thing that you were saying is that um especially about, you know, putting on the mask of social media or p- projecting a certain image, you know, and I, I think one thing that I've, you know, this is, you know, it's, you know, th- that's something that's, that, you know, that's occurring today, but it's not something that's particularly really new because there's always been, you know, one thing that Bruce Lee used to say is that I've never seen a man who were, who was outwardly arrogant who wasn't inwardly a coward. And sometimes we, we, we present, you know, we, we want to present this face this of tough guy, this um, persona yeah, of whatever, I'm, I'm yeah. all this, I'm all that. And, you know, and, and also with that, you can rub a lot of people the wrong way 100%. because, you know, it's like, um, it's like this, uh, you know, you know, you know, they believe that they've got to present this, you know, this, this persona. And so I think it's, it's very important to try to get underneath that, you know, get, get underneath that and just get to, you just get to be, get to be real because I, you know, um, the one thing that I, I've, I noticed over the years, a lot of people are just afraid to, to make a mistake, you know, yeah. afraid to say, to I'm, fail. I'm, yeah, afraid to I, fail. It, yeah. 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 And we all fail, you know, and that's yeah, the yeah. thing about it. we all screw up, you know. I mean, how many times, you know, can, can I say how, how many times I've messed up or did things that was like, you know, what idiotic? What were you thinking? Right. And, 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 you know, and for me, my mentality has always been, you know, you can either, you, you know, you, let's say you could have went left or you could have went right. And I went left. And some and and I had a horrible outcome, you know. And the thing that a, the, a big mistake a lot of people make is that, you know, they 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 can't separate themselves from that particular decision. You know, they'll you know instead of saying you know what I could have I could have went right, and next time I'm going to go right. I'm correct it next yes. time. Yeah. They'll say. I'm such an I idiot. I can't believe I went left. I'm such a dummy. Yeah. How could oh, I do yeah. that? You know, I, I, I'll i never get it right. I'll never be able, I'll never, you know, and they beat themselves up and they they wed themselves to a particular decision or a particular moment in life where you screwed up instead of like, you know, forgiving yourself and saying, yeah, yeah I, I screwed up. Now, what can I do differently? How can I step back? And I think that's that's very important, especially, you know, I, you know, I, I would say, especially for, for young people today, because I think the, the, like you said, they see so much perfection in this world. And, and so when they, you know, when they don't exhibit that, you know, when they don't, you know, what they'll do, they'll do two things. They'll try to project out that outward project perfection, Mm -hmm. But inwardly, they beat the crap out of themselves, you know, right, constantly. Right. Yeah, it's definitely true because, like, in my early twenties, I definitely was like that, a hundred percent. You know, I portrayed like I had it all together, like I was just confident, you know. But deep down, I really was not very confident, very shy. I couldn't look people in the eye. I had tr- trouble. I was very anxious when I talked to new people. And then, I will say that I did 
I got to where I noticed those things about myself and I worked on them every time. Like I, when I, when I, I know I've talked about it on the podcast before I would go up to somebody and even if I didn't hear what they were saying, I would definitely just make eye contact. I would just work on it a little bit of a time. And finally it came together where the eye contact kind of stayed every now and then I struggle from it yeah. from time to time. It's kind of hard when you meet somebody and they kind of feel a little odd. You can tell they're a little anxious. So you kind of get a little anxious. That does happen. But, uh, I think one thing that, um, people are doing nowadays is that they're always looking for the negative. They always think that the worst is going to happen and they're always every, they always find the bad and everything. Yeah. So you're always going to see the bad. You're, I mean, if you're always looking for the bad, you're always going to find it. So I think more people need to learn, look for like more positive. Like even if, even if you have like a long work day, you have to stay late 12 hour shift. You know what? Try to find the positive in there yeah. versus I'm like getting paid. Yeah, I'm getting paid. I'm making a little extra money. You know, it's all right. You I'm know, healthy. I can do. I can work twelve hours. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm. Be thankful you're healthy enough to work twelve hours. You have to, a yeah. home that's. You know, your family's healthy. Try to find the positives in those moments, and I think that helps you become a better person long term. Mm, yeah, I think I've said you. this before on the podcast too, but um, this guy I used to work with, uh, Monty. He actually just retired uh, last year. He said that uh, you know, he's like, yeah, I could, I could retire now. He's like, but then again, like. Every day that I'm at work, whenever I go home, I have something to look forward to. I have, I can look forward to getting off work. Mm, He's yeah. like, you can't have the good without the bad. He's mm. like, I feel like you appreciate the good way less if there's not those days where you have to bust your ass a little bit. And then whenever I go home and I can relax, I appreciate it more. If I was just relaxing all the time, that would just be. You can appreciate it because yeah. you know you don't have to, the struggle does help appreciate things a little bit. Yeah, you know? definitely, most definitely. Um, how do you feel about your Carolina Panthers having the number one draft pick? Oh, man. I know it's a big pivot here, but well, I thought we were on that for a little you, while. How he, really, how do you feel about losing DJ Moore? <laughs> That's what hurt the most. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, to be honest with you, um, I didn't even know Carolina had the number one. Oh, it happened yesterday, yep. Okay. okay. Or Yeah, it was like yesterday or Thursday. I think it was Thursday. It happened Thursday. Did it? I yeah. think it, oh, it might have happened Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, so they traded – the ninth spot moved up to the number one pick. Okay, so they tra- this year's ninth, DJ Moore, a twenty twenty four first round, first round, and another sixty first s- overall pick. Yeah, and uh, another and second. a second round. It was like four picks and DJ Moore for the number one pick. They gave up a lot. Yeah. Now, I knew the Bears were going to trade back because they have Justin Fields. That's yeah, their guy, yeah. and. So I knew it was coming back. I thought they were going to trade back and get a receiver, but they got the receiver they needed. And traded back. And traded back and got – so I think the Bears won that. But looking at it from the Panthers' perspective, you had the Texans, the Colts, the Raiders, the Falcons, and I think there's one more I'm missing in there. There's four or five teams right there that's going quarterback. Mm-hmm. And to me, I think there's three quarterbacks in this draft. Yeah. You can go Will Levis. I think he's – yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm, I'm not taking Will Stroud, Levis. Stroud. Stroud. Anthony Richardson. Richardson. And Bryce Young. And Bryce Young, yeah. Those Bryce are the Young. three for me. And uh, I'm very interested because they, they seem that they have their guy. Yeah. Okay. So, so you think they know who they, they want. Yeah, I think that. And, and now they can take him. Who do you think they're going to go with? <sighs> That's tough because Anthony Richardson has got Cam Newton written all over him. See, I, I keep seeing I, – I keep seeing people say that but that's a I feel like that's a slight to Cam Newton Cam Newton was oh a, that's fine I'm saying yeah. like that's what they're probably that's what you're looking at you look at the best seasons the Panthers have had in recent history uh-huh. and it's with Cam Newton it's because of Cam Newton oh for sure so you gotta you gotta at some point be like what are we doing wrong and what were we doing right yeah and when you don't have a quarterback in your arsenal you have you have Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield it's like oh, yeah what are you gonna do? You've got to have a quarterback. So they, I think, I think both teams won. If they get their guy, if they go out there and take Anthony Richardson, or I don't think they should take uh, Baker or not Baker, but uh, Bryce Young. Really? Because I just think he's too small, man. No, was that who you were thinking about? Um, you know, between the three, I really don't know. I think Richardson. Richardson is from a clean pocket. He throws. He throws one of the most beautiful. He probably throws the most beautiful deep ball in this draft. But and he can he can make plays on his legs, but I think that when you watch Florida, he, he did make some plays. Like remember the two point conversion? I think it was where he yeah sh- right. He ran out, was in the pocket, came out, ran back, and made you know completed the touchdown on the two point conversion. He's a good playmaker, can extend plays, 
But when the going gets tough and the pocket collapses, I just don't know if he's that guy. Yeah, that's I'm not saying true. he can't be, but I'm saying that if I had I to criticize him, is. Bryce Young is that guy. Bryce Young, I feel like is a is baller NFL ready, but he don't have the physical traits right. like a Richardson does. Yeah. You know, he's five eleven. He's, I mean, think about all the the five eleven guys who. I mean, what Baker Mayfield's right at six foot. Yeah, um, Kyler Murray's struggling. He's man, struggling. You know? He's up and down. It's, it's like but he also had to deal with Cliff Kingsbury too. That's true. So it's hard to really pinpoint on that one. Yeah, and C.J. Stroud seems like he's somewhere in between yeah. Bryce and Richardson. I think that sh- it wouldn't shock me if they went Stroud, but it also wouldn't shock me if they went the other two too. But what I don't like about them moving up is I, th- I really wish that the Panthers wouldn't have got rid of DJ Moore. Yeah, that's tough. Because yeah. that's uh, that was their only number one. Yeah, because you got rid of – for so long, it was like all Carolina needs is like a good quarterback. Yeah. You know, you had uh, – what's his name? Anderson. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Anderson. Anderson. And who was playing well Ooh, at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. You had DJ Moore. You had Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. And then now all those guys are gone. Yeah. You really want to put a rookie behind that with – who's the weapons? Yeah. Shaw uh, Smith, Terrence Marshall. The running backs. Well, the running Chenault. backs are good, yeah, but they're not going to like save a rookie. They're not going to help a rookie out that sure. much, you know. Well, like I mean, they didn't have a bad back half of the year. They didn't, and that's because of the running game. So yeah, it'll be interesting. It will be. Yeah. So you still keep up with boxing? Uh, not as much, you yeah. know. Um, um, actually, I know there's. I suppose be going over to watch the next MMA fight. When, who's who's coming up next week? Usman Edwards, maybe. Is that next week? I think. I think yeah. you might be right. What was last night? Was it 286 or was that a uh, fight card? Uh, I really don't know. I know it was 280. I know 285 was the one we watched with Cyril Gaon and Okay, so two, yeah, 286 is the 18th. That's uh, Edwards and Usman. Got Justin Gaethje versus uh, Faziev. I don't really know that. Faziev. Faziev. Rafael Faziev. Oh, Brian Barbarena is fighting. And Gunnar Nelson. That'll be a good fight between Edwards and Usman. Marvin mm-hmm. Vittori and... Uh, that twelve and one guy from middleweight. I'm not Roman Galeeds. I don't know him. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar. With you get into uh, UFC at all? A little bit. I'm not. You know. I'm. You know. I'm trying to get into it more. I got back into it about two years ago. I really was into it back in like the 2006 to 10 era. You know, like the Chuck Liddells and like mm-hmm. those the brawlers and like the Anderson Silvas and. Really got into it then, and I kind of stopped for a little bit, and then Conor McGregor made me pick it up a little bit. I'm not a fan, but I will say he is entertaining with Nate Diaz, his fight, and I stopped for a little bit. And then uh, Francis Ngannou actually got me back into uh, UFC. You know, if you listen to his him talk about him coming from Cameroon, I think it was Cameroon, okay. his journey to America, on and they, you know, he he got dropped off into the Sahara Desert seven times, and was like he he. he he made this, you know, this trek all the way to to America, and like, it was very interesting to see, you know, because people from America would, they don't have that mentality, because, you know, I, I mean, we pretty got, we pretty much got it made over here for the most part. I mean, there, we do have our issues, you know, we do have our issues, but to see Francis Ngano, it was very interesting because you, I, I, I was like, man, this guy's really come a long way from. His journey here was just always interesting to me. But, uh, yeah, I, I always thought he was going to be a heavyweight champion. And then I wanted to see him and John Jones fight. Oh, man. That, that was going to be the fight. Which it still might be. Yeah. Did you watch the fight with uh, John Jones last a couple weeks ago? No, I did not. That was uh, very interesting. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, I expected, I didn't know what to expect. I had a feeling that John Jones could go out there and just starch him. But I, Really it was like Cyril Gans also a killer, so it's like oh, no. I didn't expect it to be that fast, man. Oh, I know. Oh, uh, so when we started this pod, we've always talked about what kind of got us to start this podcast was we we, we always wanted to do uh, like kind of top ten list of like actors and mm. quarterbacks mm. and whatever it may be, and we were thinking like we we could do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we were wanted to talk about like writing an album and like doing like a music album, oh. you know, like maybe some blues or some like rock and roll or something. We've talked about uh, doing a movie, mm-hmm. making, I mean, obviously it'd be very, very low budget, <laughs> right. but at least we can say that we, you know, we have a movie, it, just the, the experience would be a lot of fun, I think. Yes, yes. Could you ever see yourself like writing a film or directing a film? 
Uh, I could. I could. I, I could definitely see you doing it. You know, um, you know, um, you know, and we can kick around some ideas if y'all want to. Yeah, I think, I think be, that's a great idea. You know. We got time. Let's go. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, because uh, um, uh, let me think. Um, you know, I, you know, I've um, I've worked on a couple of scripts. You know, I've worked okay. on a couple of scripts. I had know, an idea. And, you know, yeah. And, you know, I've, I've played around. You know, with a couple of scripts, and you know, I've actually, um, I'm actually uh, just trying to clean up a stage play, a full length stage play that that I've been working on for a while. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but, but yeah, um, um, uh, you know, it. You know, especially with your with your martial arts uh, uh, background, you can right. probably have some fun. You know, for sure, yeah. You know, doing some, you know, just little small. You know, I never really thought about. I that. never considered that either. Surprisingly, that's like, interesting. Yeah, yeah that's I, crazy. I, I that love, we never thought uh, martial arts movies like Jean Claude Van Damme and Bruce Lee. Yeah, and Jackie Chan, especially like him doing all of his own stunts. Like yeah. I've never even considered that as an Having option. Like a fight scene in, yeah, the, in right. the movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking that it would be really good to have just little small, especially, uh, um, especially with YouTube, you know, just little small vin- vignettes and put it, yeah. to, put it together as a, fin- you know, a, as a little, oh, like okay. a part one or yeah, like an hour long or yeah, something. And so basically you could like film a part, you know, and then, and then, uh, you know, eventually they could sit down and watch it. An entire, an entire movie, yeah. yeah. It like, comes what? out almost as like a series, but it's yeah. only like 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, what if you had, I don't think I've, this might exist on YouTube, but like, what if you did start like your own like movie series on, like this is part one, episode one or whatever, but it's like a film and then you tune in next week to see like part two. Yeah. And yeah, like right. you gradually yeah. like create like a, like, a, like a show in a way. Yeah. I think that would be a lot of fun. You know, uh, one, you know, one idea I was thinking about, you know, just, it would be a good little break it up into a clip, you know, you know, break it up it is, um, you know, sort of, sort of like a kill bill type situation where you, where you have, a, you know, this is just an idea. You know oh, I, mean? I, I, you know, I like it. Uh, where, where you have an older guy, he, he's dating a younger woman, you okay. know, he's dating a younger woman. And back in the day he used to be a badass, but he's, he's an older, you know, he's, yeah, he's, right. he's, he's not anymore. His prime is in past. Yeah, yeah. His prime is past. And, you know, and he's dating this young, beautiful woman and he's happy and he's like, you know, ready to be settled down. And, um, you have, you, you started out with a cute little scene with them. Like you're thinking, okay, this is nice. You know, you know, play some old music that's, you know, and to get the audience prime thinking, okay, this is a May, December, romance and they go out and then you have them out out in the um out on the streets and uh she actually you know she she looks she looks at him with a little flirtatious look and uh pulls him in the alley you know go in the alley there's a some thugs in there you know okay and so he's thinking oh my goodness you know they're you know they're gonna they're gonna try to you know do something to me and me and me and my my uh, my woman and so he he you know he prepares himself because he used to be a badass so he's he's got a little bit so he's he's able to handle himself a little bit you know handle himself a little bit but she ends up uh um um shooting him with a taser you know so she's actually in on it Uh, and basically and so basically so basically the the gist of it is that you know she she's dating him and she wants him for the life insurance or whatever. So she's setting him up, yeah. So, so she sets him up. So to make a long story short, um, you know, um, you know, he's in the hospital. He doesn't really die. Pretend like pretends like he dies, and you have her at the funeral with all the goons there, yeah, right? yeah. you know, pretending to be you know sad, sad yeah. and stuff. And so the rest of the the series would be. Him taking revenge on. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, in a way, yeah, just you know? the revenge. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I don't know if I have any interest in like writing or directing, but I think I have more of an interest in acting. Yeah, I think I could enter that headspace a little and bit. See, for me, I have more of an interest in like writing or directing. Really? I feel like, yeah, yeah. I've talked about a uh, a horror film idea. Oh, uh, yeah. Past. Tell me, you gotta tell me about and it. And so I like I like that idea and the thought of like. Um, 
like Quentin does, where it's uh, he gets you to like a certain character, and then that character dies off, or like in Game of Thrones. And so um, I, the setting is maybe, maybe like a bar or something, you know, it's a group of friends, and they're talking. And there's going to be naturally one person that you kind of gravitate to. It's going to be the main character. And uh, then so the rest, you know, they've been there for a few hours. just maybe like five minutes of dialogue. You know, you're starting to get to know the characters. You're starting to like them. And then, um, you know, all the guys leave except for the main character. Okay. And he sits there and he's talking to the bartender. And uh, then it, the bar closes. He walks out. It's an empty parking lot. And uh, this, I want it to be like a fixed camera. And then the guy walks into the scene. He's going to his car. Someone comes up behind him and then uh, beats him to death and takes his wallet. And then that's it. That's it like, that's like, and it cuts. That's just like Pretty the opening brutal. to the movie. Yeah. 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 So it, uh, and I, I really like the idea of like anthologies too, yeah. where it's like just those short stories where it doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be. Anthology is fun, man. I yeah. really enjoy right. it. Have you watched uh, Love, Death and Robots? Yes. Yes, so I, I haven't watched. It. I haven't it. watched it. It's, it's awesome. Man. It's, it's so man. cool. Because yeah, yeah, you're you're an anime guy, right? Yeah, uh, a little bit. I'm not a big anime guy. Okay, but I, I like. Uh, but I do like. Um, uh, uh, um, there's a few stuff that I like, but you know, I'm not a big anime guy. Right, because I know the one. I know you recommended One Punch Man to me. Yeah, One uh, Punch that's Man. That's the one that's been rec- recommended to me the most. I haven't. Have you? Have you I haven't it? watched it. But I, I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. But I will say, Love, Death, and Robots, and uh, talking about anthology, uh, Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Yeah. Yes, yes. Black Mirror was really, really good. I really liked uh, Black Museum. That one really stuck with me. It was like the, uh, the the English black actor. She's on like, I forget where she's coming. She might be going to like, to like Las Vegas or something. She goes to get, uh, not gas. I think she has an electric car. Uh, yes. She goes into the museum. Yes, yes. Um, she's from. Uh, she's in Black Panther. Um, the young girl. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She yeah. she seems like a really good actor. Yeah, she is. She but is. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Kind of stuck with yeah. me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Black Mirror was is one that I really really loved. Um, Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Did you have you seen Ballad of Buster Scruggs? Yeah, yeah. What did you think about that? I liked it. I, I did too. I, I liked it. I, I liked. Um, um, uh, I liked the one. Uh, I think it was um, the one with the the older uh, gold miner. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that yeah. one's good. That, was, that one was good. We're, when the uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but yeah, that one that one was we really spoiled really... like five movies. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. Man. I, know. I think it's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really like that idea of like um, like Game of Thrones does, where they take the main character and they make you fall in love with them, and then it completely terrifies you. Like yeah, what it, happens? The fate of the character is not expected, and that and that is like that's one thing that, like you said, Game of Thrones. That's like the difference between like Marvel and Game of Thrones, right? You, yeah, you exactly. know, you know, you don't know who's who's safe. You don't know who's gonna live, who's gonna die. I love that. You know, like the movie Scream was one of the movies that did that very well with Drew Barrymore in the what late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, she was huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is like Drew Barrymore. And she doesn't make She's it fifteen young, minutes. Yeah, you know, and she, you're like, oh my, this is Drew Barrymore, and then they kill her off like <laughs> ten minutes in. You're like, oh my gosh, like, that's like one of the. Wild, especially in horror films, because you get a A list actor in there, and you murder him in the first. So you know the scene scenes. in Scream where it is the beginning scene where uh, Ghostface has her boyfriend out there on the back on the porch, chair, the light yeah. on. So at Gabby's house, her back porch has a light, almost like just like that, and it's a little like smaller. But every time, like it's at nighttime, and like we'll let her dog out or something, and I'll roll the blind up. To see if the dog's out there, I see the light shining, and it always reminds me of that scene <laughs> where he cuts the light on, and it's, the dude's sitting there with the duct tape. Yeah, it always mouth. reminds yeah. me of that, and I'm yeah. like, I haven't told Gabby about it because I don't want her to be like no, always yeah. thinking about it and be freaked <laughs> out about it. And it's like it kills me. Like they anticipate. You need to like wonder. set them up to where you're tied to it. Out there. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can do this. Put a little like ketchup on you every hand running down with some duct tape. Oh, so messed up. You, I mean, but you got to show it to her first. You got to yeah, watch right. the camera yeah, right. earlier and then so it's uh, being on her mind. Yeah, for sure. But I really always like that idea of and like some horror movies like The Grindhouse. They gross you out. They make you uncomfortable because it's being gross. Mm-hmm. And I want it to almost be like a grindhouse that it makes you uncomfortable, but not in a gross way, in like a psychological way. Where like that could happen to me. Yeah. I could go, I could leave the bar with my friends, and mm-hmm. I could get mugged, and that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way. I mean, I think that you know, for me, I, I like um, movies that make me think. Yeah, that make me, me like you know, like oh, you know when you know I you know when you're you're. Um, 
you can't sleep at night. Like, okay, did I hear something? You know, yeah, right. You know, um, but just the gory, gory stuff. It's, and, it's ever done. Yeah, it's ever done. You know, like the saws, the hostels, all that. Which have, I love those, but have you seen Hereditary? A twenty four film. Tony uh, Collette's the lead. I think. I mean, tell me. Uh, uh, the sons, uh, the the daughter. There's a son and a daughter going to a party. The daughter has like like that hiccup thing going on, that yes. like knocking sound, and then yes. has her head out the window. And yes. I don't want to spoil it, but. It's pretty crazy yes. scene there. And yes, then, yes, I've seen. Her. What'd you think about that film? I've never seen it. Didn't like it. Yeah, I've seen that movie. I, well, I watched it one time, and I was watching parts of it. Oh, okay. I thought you and said then, you liked it. No, that was the time that I was um, playing beer pong by myself with uh, <laughs> all my buddies were watching it, and I was like, "I'm too drunk for this. I'm gonna go in here and keep drinking." <laughs> Dang, like, man. I was like watching this right now. Like, I don't want to watch it halfway and then like. And then not enjoy it for what it is. So yeah. I was like, I need to watch this. Yeah. Um, not it, it was one of those movies where I was like, this is going to be like one of those 50 50 films. You, you really loved it. You really didn't. To me, it didn't hit. I, I, I didn't like it either. I, yeah. I lost, I lost interest, but I will say, Tony Collette's character and her acting performance in that film is top notch. It's worth watching just for that alone. But yeah, it didn't do it for me. I lost interest, and the son's acting I thought was very boring. You know, the dad's acting I thought was very boring. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Tony Collette's the only reason why I would watch that. But, yeah, that was one of the movies that I think a lot of people reference now for, like, psychological horror yeah. that uh, that uh, people are on the fence about. But another one is uh, that I really liked was The Menu. Yeah, I, I actually like The Menu. I still haven't watched it. I'm going to go home. I need to go home and watch That's it today. A good, I have time. I'm going to go watch it today. Anna Taylor-Joy is becoming one of my favorite actors. Yes, I really like her a lot. Yeah, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's fine. And I still haven't seen the... Um, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit. Have you oh, seen it? Oh, it's phenomenal. Is it good? It's phenomenal. It's... There's... I got three favorite shows, and it depends on like, what I'm really watching. I guess The Office will be my favorite, but Breaking Bad and Queen's Gambit is wow. up there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's, it? uh, it's spectacular. Wow. Yeah. It's good. You play chess? No, no, no. Don't have to. The writing's don't have good. to, yeah. Okay. You think chess boring? Absolutely. I, we both love chess. We play chess every now and then against each other. And, and uh, yeah, just sitting back, you would think that watching people play chess would be boring. Yeah, but the writing is so good. The it character makes development. You, and the character amazing. development is so good yeah. that it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to check it out. Now, how many seasons have it had? One. It's, it's, a limited, limited, it's, a it's a limited series. Okay. So, so you don't have to get like, too invested. It's no. eight episodes and it's done. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll check you it out. You will love it. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, The Lighthouse? Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like The Lighthouse? Uh, yeah, I did like The Lighthouse. <laughs> oh, you didn't like it? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. Really? Yeah. It is very weird. Yeah. For sure. I haven't seen it either. That's like 24 Good acting, too. though. Yeah, that, and that's really why I appreciate acting, it the most. Excellent acting. It's, uh, it's, it's dark, and it's, uh, it's a strange film, but, I mean, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson are yeah. such, such different people and such a great combination, yeah. surprisingly. Robert Pattinson, I mean, both those guys are phenomenal actors, yeah. but I think Robert Pattinson doesn't get the credit he deserves for being a good actor. Yeah, he, he really, I mean, I guess because he started out with Twilight. Yeah. Twilight he got a bad rap there. But he, he, like you said, he is an excellent actor. Uh, have you seen the, the his latest Batman? He seems yeah, like, I haven't seen that. What did yeah, you think? It was about? good. I, I thought I, it was great. Yeah, I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. You know. Yeah, he definitely played that part. Not in a way like uh, like Christian Bale did or uh, any of the other guys. I think it was a much different Batman. But he played the part that he was supposed to play very well. Yeah. So going back to your movie, who would you have movie, as your yeah. actors? <laughs> uh, of anybody yeah you, have, you, you know um i'd have to put jonah hill in mind as a side character i like that i love yeah. i love jonah hill uh it's like for some reason i didn't like i didn't pick jonah, jonah hill, hill picked jonah him. hill kind yeah. of picked me yeah you know i've always been a robert de niro fan he's my one of my favorite actors right there but jonah hill for some odd reason is one of my favorite actors Jonah too. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Yeah, it's just he's always brings this comedic relief that I really love, and he can kind of play a serious role too. Like his role, role in Wolf of Wall Street was so much fun. Yeah, yeah with it the was. big teeth and yeah. you know, got the clear quit, glasses. You show me, you show me a page stub that says seventy thousand dollars. I'll quit my job right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I work for you. Yeah, I always like yeah, Jonah Hill's one of my favorites. Oddly, yeah, I'm a big Denzel guy, but he's a little bit. A little too old now, you know, um, for, uh, you know, 
Well, and we can even say like the actors themselves in their prime. I mean, oh, okay, yeah, 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 for uh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Denzel, you know, big, you know, oh, yeah, he's phenomenal. Um, I like, uh, you know, um, I guess um, I, I I would have a great film for uh, what's his name, yeah, Franco. James Franco. Oh, James Franco? Really? Yeah, yeah. I like James Franco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's just so controversial now. Now, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I think James Franco is, is yeah. a good little actor. Have you seen, you being a play guy and a Denzel guy, have you seen Fences? I have not seen Fences. Really? And I know we talked about it. Yeah. We talked about uh, Fences. And, um, so I think it's based off a play, right? Yeah, August Wilson. Yeah. You know. Um, um, but no, I have not seen Fences. What's the, what's the actress in... Fences. She is very underrated. I love her. Uh, then how how uh, uh, how do you get away with murder? Was she in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? Was that the same actor? I think she was with um, the one on Netflix. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, the trumpet player. And um, I think she was. I think that's the same actor. But what's her? and she's in the the what's what's the movie out? Uh, What's it about? Uh, she's a warrior. Oh, uh, oh, was, woman king. Yeah, the woman. The woman king. king yeah. Yeah. yeah, is that her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Seen Any interest? Yeah. Well, yeah, I just haven't been seeing that many movies there lately. What's uh, what's one that you've seen really, re- or kind of more recent that you've really liked? Um. Str- <laughs> strangely enough, uh, Megan. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> was okay. Good? I liked Megan. It okay. Was, uh, yeah, I haven't seen that. It looks very odd. Yeah, it's, it's an odd film. Kind of like a modern Chucky almost. It's yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. The Ex- perception I get from Exactly. It. It's, it's one of those films. It's just goofy. It's one of those goofy films. And then the other film, uh, Missing. Missing? I don't think I know Missing. Do you? Uh, no, I don't. That was a small film that came out, you know, earlier in the year. And it was uh, very well done, but it was a little very small budget you know um more of like it's not a found footage but it was like one of those you know is it's um uh she's on a computer a lot this is a good it was well written i was really? surprised you know it was a good little suspenseful okay you seen the northman yes did you yes. like it yeah i could see you really liking that yeah. yeah did you have you seen it i haven't no i haven't i've seen it it was uh it was okay yeah, it was okay. I don't know if I would recommend it. if it was the right person. Like if like I I had a feeling you would really like it, so yeah. I'd recommend it to you. Um, it kind of got a little odd with like the uh, like the fantasy like tree yeah. and all that. I thought that was kind of odd. Alexander Skarsgård, I kind of prefer. Uh, was it Tim Skarsgård? Bill. Bill. Bill, Bill Skarsgård. Skarsgård. I kind of like him a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of liked him a little bit more. He's, he's, he's a little bit better of an actor. I feel like Alexander's more like the looker. You yeah. Know? And, and the only thing about the Northman, too, is it's sort of – it's not false advertisement, but you think, okay, this is going to be action like, all, yeah, the, all right. the way through. Yeah. And, and it has action in it, but it's it's more of a thoughtful, you know, What's well, the same guy that did uh, The Witch and um, – the lighthouse, so. yeah. Robert Eggers. Yeah, have you seen a uh, Barbarian? We're rattling them off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're bar- going through them now. Yeah, Barbarian. That's uh, with um, Bill Skarsgård and uh, oh, it's Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill. Oh, okay. Yeah. I need to watch that. Yeah, though. he's in there. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that. Yeah, I liked it. You liked it. It, it was interesting, and then got a little goofy. Yeah, it did get goofy. It, it did get goofy, but um, it was worth a watch. Yeah, it, it, was, it was worth a watch. Um, uh, did you like um, what's Smile? Have you seen Smile? Oh, I haven't watched that yet. Smile. I still haven't watched that. What's that? That's the um, that's the horror film. It was in the theaters not long ago, right? Yes. You still going to the movies? Uh, not as much. Not, not as, much? as much. Not as much. I really want to see that new uh, Adam Driver film, Sixty Five. I think it's what it's called. Yes, that looks good. That looks yeah, pretty good. Yeah. We almost went to see it Friday. I think it came out Friday. Oh, yeah, but y'all yeah. went to eat with us and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what about I- uh, The Devil All the Time? Devil all the time. Robert Pattinson. It's on Netflix. Robert Pattinson, Tom Holland, and Bill Skarsgård. Have not seen it. Is it good? It's very good. It's very dark. It's a little slow, but it's a very dark film. It like really makes you think. Uh, it's got good, great character development, but okay. it's uh, it's very dark. Okay. I'm yeah, you would it. you would definitely like it. It's like a two and a half hour, three hour movie though. So you have to. 
put some time. You have to hunker down for yeah, it. Yeah, but it's uh, it's worth the watch. I really, I've been trying to get him to watch it for like two years now. It's tough for me to get invested in a three hour film. It's like God, like you come home yeah, and work for three hours. This movie better be good. Yeah, it's 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 hard because it's weird because I can stream a series. Yeah, it's two hours and eighteen minutes. It's not that yeah. bad. You know, because it seems like because you you can get tricked into watching a series, you'll watch episode after episode, right? But with a movie, you're like, ah, it's so. I long. don't want to pause it in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so. for sure. But yeah, Devil All the Time. It's got some really good scenes in it, um, especially because like you see, you're a fan of Marvel, so you probably do like Tom Holland. Yeah. Um, he is such a, like a goofy, like play flatter, and he is not that. In this, no, okay. he is the opposite. It's a very kind dark more role. Serious role. Yeah, yeah, very, I, very dark role that he plays in this movie. It's really good. Okay, so who do you think the top five best actors of all time are? Whew. Top five best actors yeah. of all time. Uh, all right, my favorite. I can tell you my favorite. Let's do, let's do favorite. Let's do favorite. Let's do favorite. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to say who's. It there. really it's is so hard. It really it's is. So, um, Opinion, like not opinionated, but it's, it, it is a there's little bit. Yeah, there's biases involved, and yeah, there's so many categories for sure. Um, uh, one off the top of my mind, let's each give one and we'll keep going. I like okay. that. Okay, um, I, I'd say uh, Bobby Duvall, Robert Duvall. Um, okay, okay, uh, I don't know if you guys know, I know you know from uh, God, the Godfather, uh-huh. uh, Lonesome Dove. Um, I, I just think he's such a talented actor who just, um, the little small things he does, you know, in scenes, just, uh, you know, he just, I, I, I just think he's great. What, yeah. What, he didn't he play in a comedy film. It might've been like Step Brothers or something that he was in. And I can't think of it. Um, I think he may have. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh man. It was, uh, oh, it was, uh, Four Christmases. Oh yeah. He I was remember the dad. Four Christmases. Yeah. I remember okay, yeah. He's kind of an asshole. Yeah. He, was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he plays a good asshole. Yeah. All right, so you go ahead. Uh, I know I've, I've already said uh, Jonah Hill and Robert De Niro. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Christoph Waltz is one of those guys to where like even just the small, like the couple of little small sample size he has, he hits for me. Mm-hmm. You know, his, Hans Landa is oh, one of the man. greatest villains in it's, the yeah, history. Of, yeah, I, I just love the the intensity he brings to the screen. Is you know he's 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 very terrifying. Right. As that character and can be and also in the same sense he's he's very witty, very, you know, smart, you know, and and has these like quick little one liners that make you laugh too. Right. I really enjoy Christoph Waltz. Yeah, I know I said Leonardo DiCaprio earlier and we were talking about Robert Pattinson, but um uh shit, it just slipped my mind. Um what Christian Bale. Yeah. Christian Bale. I'm Christian a Bale's huge great. Christian Bale fan, man. Yeah. And like, especially uh, what really did it for me was American Psycho, uh, because yeah. it's such a strange film. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and f- from that he earned the Batman role. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just such a completely different shift in films. That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah, American Psycho was very good, man. Yeah, and he 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 transforms himself. Have you seen the mechanic? Yeah, and it's not that good of a movie. Or the Machinist. It's, it's, yeah, the Machinist. Yeah, yeah. and it's the, not that. It's yeah. an okay movie. Yeah, it's, it's 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 like yeah, like like you said, it's an okay movie, but just his dedication. Yeah, to he's like, like, get that yeah. skin. He looked like he was like 75, 80 pounds. He looked yeah. well, like very. He, he legit very, got down to like one hundred and thirty pounds or something. Really? Like it was he awful. Was so small. Yeah, and then uh, there's another movie that he was in that a lot of people don't talk about. Equilibrium. I don't know. That. It's a uh, it's like a science fiction movie. I remember um, where gun, it's gun fu. They're using gun fu. Is that the one? Uh, and so it's like um, yeah, pretty much. And so um, basically, there's the government has developed a pill to where nobody can show emotion, okay. and everybody has to take their medicine. But then there's like this group of outsiders that are trying to take over because they don't want to, you know, they want to feel emotion. Yeah. And so he is like on the break. He's like a real high up as one of the people in the government that's enforcing this. And then he ends up like, I forget how he ends up accidentally not taking the pill. And then he's like, Oh wow. This is like, what the fuck? He's like, I've got to start. I've got to, I've got, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah. And so he like switches of what mm-hmm. side he's on and like tries to start overthrowing the government. Yeah. And it's a ridiculous sci-fi movie, but his acting and the action is so good. So good. Yeah. It's really fun. Okay. Uh, are y'all big uh, Samuel Jackson? Oh, well, absolutely. Samuel, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, Samuel Jackson's like, if you don't like Samuel Jackson, I don't know if I could trust your judgment on that. I don't know. He's just so likable. Yeah. Let me guess. Did you 
You like him? Yes. yes okay, yes. I was about to say. Uh, Have you seen yeah. Lakeview Terrace? No. Is it? Um, is it? Wait a minute. Is that the where he plays the um, the neighbor? Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, yes, that's so. a good movie. Yeah, it's man. very good. That's a really it's good movie. Yeah, it's a very good. Little it's um, I forget the guy. I think it's the guy from The Conjuring. Uh, it's the white dude from The Conjuring. Yeah. And so him and uh, his black fiance or girlfriend or wife, whatever, they move into the house next to Samuel Jackson. Yes. And Samuel Jackson is like the type of guy that's like, I don't want the black girl dating the white guy. Oh, uh, but okay. he's a cop, like super high yes. up in the fucking community. And he just terrorizes right. his family. Really? Yes. Oh, and it's like, it gets real fucking dark. It's good. Have you seen The Cleaner? Where Samuel Jackson plays the guy who comes and cleans up after dead bodies that are like, if, like if someone gets murdered in a home, he comes and cleans up the dead body for the families. Hmm. What is that on? I mean, it was it. on Netflix. That was like a month ago. So yeah. I, still I haven't be on there. seen it on there, but yeah, I was like, I'd never heard of this movie, but yeah. it was just okay. to see him in a lead role was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, so here's your next one. Uh, yeah, this is where it gets... Uh, uh, going off the, off the top of my head, I'm going to go... Oh, man. I'm going to go Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah, Jack Nicholson is spectacular. Man. Him and, like, the one who the one who flew the cuckoo's nest, the shining, I mean, right. the departed. Yeah. He, like, he is... I just love watching him act. Yes. He, plays, he plays those roles really, really, really well. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go Willem Dafoe. Oh, he's so likable. I love Willem Dafoe, man. So and that's likeable. why I was so happy to see the Lighthouse. I was like, oh yeah, I love Robert Pattinson. I love Willem Dafoe. They're like both in my top five. I'm like, I have to watch this. You seen him in Boondock Saints? I've seen it a long time ago. That's a good cult classic. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, and then and then he still did like superhero stuff with uh playing Green Goblin. Green, yeah, Green Goblin. Goblin yeah. Yeah. yeah, that might be the first time I remember. See, remember him in a movie, but, but you don't really get the. I think that was uh, James Franco's first film. Was, really, uh, Spider Man, the original Spider Man. Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. So who you got? Hmm. Let me think. I don't want to go over people have already talked about. Um, Um, you know, it's uh, I like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, okay. you know, yeah. Um, you know, um, I think he's a he's a good actor. I have to ask you, what do you feel about him in Tropic Thunder? Um, I thought it was funny. Okay, yeah, I thought it was funny. He's you catching know? a little bit of pushback for that role he played. Yeah, like now he is. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, you know, of course, you know, of course, like now, you know, now, you know, you know. It's like like we we said before. If you don't like something, you know, you want to like you know cancel it, cancel it, and take it down. Yeah, and just you know, but you know, like I said, I, I thought it was, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was funny. Oh yeah, I thought it was a good role. Him yeah, and I don't, Ben Stiller. I don't think he was like doing. Nah, it he as wasn't as trying to be hateful. Away. It was yeah. just it's just, com- it's just no. comedy. That's how For I felt sure. too. But uh, yeah, I was very interested in your perspective on that because yeah, and and the thing yeah, and, and the way they did it, they you know they did it in a way. Satirical, yeah, 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 yeah satirical. not really like mocking, like yeah. mocking more. people that do blackface, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, so they were, you know, making fun of the character. I don't right. think they were doing right. You know, I always forget so. Jack Black's in there. You know, yeah, that was gonna be my next. Uh, that's, that's my next, the next, next one, Jack Black. Black. Yeah, he's which is one cool. that you didn't mention, uh, which I'm surprised you haven't thought of yet. But Frances McDermott, she was yeah. next. Yeah, okay, I yeah, had a she was next. I, I love Frances McDermott. I was just making sure you wasn't gonna forget that. No, that's was, the top I five almost said it over Jack Nicholson. Okay, but uh, yeah, I just love her, especially in Almost Famous. Almost Famous is one of my favorite films. Uh, Three Billboards. I don't know if you've ever seen Three Billboards. You told me about that. I have not watched it. Her and Woody Harrelson's in that. Very, oh, very Woody good. awesome, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's he's really good. Yeah. That's another one that's very likable. That was just, uh, a movie with him, and it. it was him, Christian Bale, and um, I can't remember who else was in it. It was uh, Out of the Furnace. Okay. And I think it was like about um, – uh, sorry, uh, Christian Bale's brother is like coming back from the war and, uh, he's kind of like, you know, not really knowing how to like get along with society and like, he's kind of poor and doing all these things and he ends up getting caught into this, uh, like cage fighting, like underground fighting ring. Uh, and Woody Harrelson's the guy that runs it. Okay. And, uh, he ends up, his brother ends up getting killed and Christian Bale is like seeking out revenge and it kind of disappointed me. Oh no. 
And now, and now the guys I watched it with, they always talk about that they really enjoyed it, but it was just like so slow and like it was like not good dialogue, like hardly any character development, not enough action. It was like I don't know what I watched it for. And like oh, the cast, I watched it. I watched it because of the cast, and like it yeah. didn't, it didn't end good. It was just mm. like everything missed, and it could be me just being wrong. Like I could have just needed to go back and rewatch it, but man, it like it seems so promising. Like it sounds like a great plot with great cast, and it's like. Oh, yeah, man. I heard it's when you get excited about a film and you know the right actors are in there and yeah. you really you're really excited to see if it goes in the direction that you're gonna like and then when you leave you're like man there's really nothing about that movie that I really liked you know have right. you seen Whiplash? Yes, yes, I like Whip Whip. Whiplash. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, it is that's excellent. one of our favorites. We got the we got, uh, yeah, we got that one right there. Yeah, we we yeah we really enjoy it. Yeah, I like um, J.K. Simmons. Yeah, J.K. Oh, Simmons so is awesome. Good. Yeah, I think he's he's so good. good in that role. What's up? What's some more J.K. Simmons movies that I could watch? Because I don't really. I've tried to watch a couple. Uh, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the. I need some pictures I need of Spider Man now. Yeah. Well, the thing about J.K. Simmons, especially for me, um, I, you know, and I, it's, I mean, I, I see him like from a lot of from old TV shows. Okay. You know, because he was uh, he had a little small part in L.A. I mean, in Law and Order. Uh, uh, the closer he had a uh, you know okay. he played the uh, chief in the closer, so you know it was so you know I don't know if stuff that you know, guys would particularly the closer like. who was the lead in the closer? Uh, Ky- 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 Kyra Cedric or okay. Cedric, you know okay. uh, the um that's uh, her daughter is actually in Smile. Oh okay yeah, cool yeah that's, that's okay her, cool her and Kevin Bacon yeah her and Kevin Bacon are married. Did yeah. you ever see that um, show called The Following? Was Kevin Bacon? Uh, I, I didn't get into it. My niece loved it, but I, 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 I didn't so get into it. So it was like, the first season was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great show. And then it just, phew, like, real down. quick. Just tanked, yeah. Do you, do you remember that? I, I don't know that. It was, uh, it was basically like a show. It was kind of a detective type show. But uh, it was like this cult following where they were just, like, had a specific series of murders they were committing throughout the town. Like, it was like a big city. It was like New York or something crazy. And it was like a huge cult following where they were, like, planning these murders on specific people throughout the city, trying to, like, you know, really just... It was just for the cult cause. And then Kevin Bacon is the detective following it. But it was, like... It kind of had, like, some goriness to it, which was surprising for it to be on, like, AMC or something. Like, I think... I believe it was an AMC show. And, like, you don't expect that AMC on AMC. has got some decent stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Breaking, well, good stuff. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Better Call Saul. The Walking Dead was okay. Well, The Walking Dead, it stayed on too long. Too it long, yeah, for sure. I mean, because it, it started out excellent. Very good, yeah. But it just, uh, it just, um, it just went on too long. I mean, for sure. you know, and there's some shows that you know, you just, it's, it, they just beat a dead horse. And yeah, and they twelve did. seasons, they yeah. like, yeah. And it's I like, tuned out like season. It three. was twelve yeah. seasons, I think so. Yeah, it, it was ridiculous. It's a. Ridiculous. I know it just ended, but I, I guess that, yeah, wow. a ridiculous amount. They bled it dry, man. Yeah, they really they bled did. it dry. Now, it was like supernatural. And now I'm not sure if you guys have, and I actually wanted to ask you about this because you're in the video games. Uh, the Last of Us. Love oh it. man, I haven't. I'm not caught up. I meant I'm to ask you. I'm like two episodes behind. It is. So good. One of the best shows I've seen in a long yeah. time. Yeah, everything yeah. is good. The acting, the dialogue. Last episode got me. It got the me. The last episode? <laughs> yeah, the last episode. up? Yeah, the last oh, episode. Oh, man. I'm it got, it got me, up. too. Yeah. I'm not caught every, up, so. Yeah, every yeah. episode has been emotional. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the last episode I watched was... Um, oh, 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 yeah, that's true. But the one with the... Uh, they meet the son and the kid. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, that one was heavy. Oh, that one hurt. That, yeah. that one hurt. Yeah, yeah, I was. I'm, I can't believe that slipped my mind. I meant to ask you that. Yeah, the last. Oh man, it's so good. Highly recommend on HBO. Yeah, it's it's one of the best shows out there now. It, yeah, it really is good. And um, I mean, you know, now how is it compared to the game? It is. It's great. Great. And we're big Resident Evil fans. Uh, the games, particularly, not the movies. They suck. The movies, the shows, all of them are terrible. And so that was like what we were worried about yeah. when I saw the last. Yeah. Was, they, they're making a game because. And then the Last of Us game is known as one of the greatest PlayStation Three games of all time. Yeah, like one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah, yeah. and so everybody was like, "I know everyone's going to be so critical." And so to hear all this positivity about it, this and it's, these people are very critical yeah, about yeah, it. You, yeah, it, it, for, yeah. That's what I was worried about because all these Hollywood directors and writers oh. want to put their own spin on things yeah. because they think that okay, yeah, this is already great. Let me just add a little extra 
you know, kind of like with NFL coaches, they think they can get the best out of players, yeah. you know. So it's like I was very skeptical going in. The actor, the female actress, uh, played in Game of Thrones. Yes. I've never – I didn't know anything about her. When I saw her, I was like, ah, uh, I don't know if I'm going to like her. Phenomenal. Yeah. Grew on me yeah, she's great. instantly. And the lead actor, I've yeah, never Pedro watched – Pedro Pascal. Yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah, watched Pedro him Pedro Pascal anything. is awesome. Yeah, He's he in really Narcos, is. Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian, yeah. 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 Um, Very good actor. Uh, yeah, he, he's p- perfect for Joel. That oh, man. Uh, yeah. it doesn't get much better on the Joel casting. Yeah, and I think Ellie too. Ellie's character is yeah, as very far as well. Only, only my only gripe with that was just the, the way she looks. She doesn't yeah. look like the character from the game, but the acting is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it to be anybody else because I don't think they could act it as as well as yeah. she has. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, I wouldn't change looks. it now. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. But at first, I had the same thought of like, eh, she don't really favor the the woman from the game. But you can't get too. But like Pedro either. Pascal is like spot on spot on both on. ends. Like looks just like him. Acts. The part is perfect. Uh, did you follow the Murdoch trials at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're talk- since we're talking about fake stuff on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, you know, you know, I think the jury made the right decision. Right, I think so, you too. Know, yeah, you know, it seemed that way. Yeah. It, it seemed just, pretty clear cut, right? Yeah. It is the timing seemed a little off. I don't see how he could. You know, I think the thing that that killed him was the kennel video, and um, oh, I haven't seen. I wasn't in, that far into the. Well, basically, what it was is, um, you know, he, you know, he had initially said that it was a couple of hours since he had seen, you know, them alive, you know, and uh, his son had actually had made a Snapchat. And and his voice was in it, and it was the Snapchat was like minutes before they oh, they got murdered. So wow. It, wow. so then I he had to get on the stand and explain why he lied. He said he got nervous. Yeah, he lied about a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so it, it really sort of messed him. I mean, he was he it was it was a mess, it, you know. And like you said, he he stole money from his clients. He just did a whole bunch of insane stuff. I'm gonna tell you how checked out on the news I've been lately. I didn't even hear about the Murdoch trials until like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I ran into a, a person uh, on my route, and she said, "Yeah, the the um, um uh, the Murdoch trials about to start." And I was like, "Uh, that's, well, that must be some like, national thing I just didn't heard of." You know, if it was local, I would have heard about it. Sure enough, I'm on Netflix scrolling. I'm like, "Is that the is that the one about?" She's like, "Yeah, that happened in South Carolina." Heather was, and uh, she said, uh, "Yeah, it happened in South Carolina." And I was like, "Is that the one where?" The guy had the con- chick in the container on one oh yeah. highway one oh one, and she's like, "Oh no, this is a whole- wait, that's not him." And uh, no, oh no. wow, I, th- I thought that's what that was. No, yeah, no. Oh, so what happened is so I mean, here's- so I, I it's kind of funny because I shit on you for not knowing about this. Yeah, and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> so what happened was is some some dumb teenagers were were out drinking on a boat one night, and uh, Alex Murdoch was. A high-end lawyer, a lot of money, a lot of power. Uh, what generations of power with yes. like lawyers and judges and whatever. And his his kids were out on a boat, drunk one night, underage. And one of the sons was driving the boat and knocked a girl off the boat. They never found her. And uh. so Alex, you know, what really was bizarre was when the families got to the crime scene. And Alex Murdahl, the uh, yeah, the dad was he goes to the other dad, the dad of the daughter who just they can't find she's she's dead, and he's like, we're gonna take care of Paul. Which Paul's the one who allegedly was driving the boat and killed her. Don't worry, we're gonna take care of him. He's gonna be all right. And the dad's like, what do you mean? Like he might have just murdered my daughter. What do you mean we're gonna? Take? That's how delusional he was, you know. And then all of a sudden, uh. Alex Murdahl's wife and his and, and the kid who was driving get murdered on his property, right? Yeah, yeah. His is is actually his um, his, yeah. His the the son that actually was driving the boat. Uh, him and the mom was actually murdered by right uh, by Alex. I mean, so, and I guess wow. his thought process was, uh, someone else did it because. 
Yeah, they that, thought I was going to get them off or something. Yeah, you know? the, yeah, yeah. He, he was he he yeah, he made some crazy story. You know, it was, yeah. And then he starts lying about stuff and wild, wild. Yeah, story. it was insane. It was insane. It was just a crazy. Uh, did you watch it on Netflix? Yeah, there's okay. like three yeah. episode documentary. Yeah. I was like, it's it's pretty heavy too. Mm. You know, it's it's kind of hard to take in. Right. But very very interesting. Did you watch the Aaron Hernandez documentary? I know it's been out for a while, but no, I did. Uh, oh, from uh, the. Uh, may have watched it back in the day um the tight end for the Patriots, for the Patriots. Yeah. yeah I I vaguely remember it. okay yeah that was a, that was a pretty good one too like yeah. a person who grew up with so much like opportunity and positivity around him and still just went off the deep end yeah. like was always tied in with drugs and gangs, mm. and, and not to mention he was like a serial killer. Yeah, like he enjoyed killing. Yeah, people. He it had, wasn't like, just what? like they think he killed like what ten, twenty yeah, people. It oh, wasn't no, even see, just I didn't like know that he killed that many. People. It wasn't yeah. even just like gang related stuff. He just like wanted to kill people. Yeah, it was like very. It was crazy. It was wild. Yeah, and wild. Thing, like, he got caught up with the gang activity. And maybe not, not that many. Maybe not ten or twenty. It was legit. Like ten people. It was like allegedly like ten people. Yeah. Now did he? Uh, did he end up? Uh, killing himself? Or yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, I think that's what they said. Well, yeah. they, that's what yeah. that's what it was ruled. But yeah, you, you never can man. tell these days with the whole Gosh. scene. Oh mm-hmm. god! Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's, that was wild crazy, in itself, man. right there. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, you ready to wrap this thing up? Yeah, man. I feel like it's uh, it's been a really good podcast. Yeah, man. Like, two we hours were... and fifteen minutes. Awesome. It flies by. Yeah, it yeah, flies by. I, I really enjoyed it, guys. A lot of I'm fun glad, having man. you on to see your perspective on you know theater and acting and movies. It's always been fun. Yeah, for sure. I haven't really uh, got to sit down and talk to you like this, so this has been very enjoyable. Yeah, it really has been. Have you fun. ever thought about doing a podcast like a uh, like instead of like like the movie club that you have? What if you guys did like a podcast? Uh, actually, me and my sister were talking about maybe doing a podcast, so maybe you guys could help us out. And- yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. Know. We'll uh, we'll have you know have. One of you on, both of you on. Uh, give you guys a shout out. Just let us know. Okay, most definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for stopping by, Glover. It's always a pleasure. I, I really enjoyed it, man, and uh, I really had fun with you guys. Yeah, if you made it this far and you haven't liked to subscribe, please do. Yeah, it goes right. a long way. Tell your friends about us. Yeah, um, yeah. So if you do decide to start a podcast, let us know, and uh, we'll definitely be mentioning that because I'm sure the people that enjoy this would enjoy that for sure. So yeah, we appreciate you having us on, or we we appreciate you being on here, man. Yeah. It's been good. Thank you very, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See you guys. Yeah, see you.